वेल गुड इवनिंग ऑल माई सेफ सी ए समीर लेडा फॉर्मर चेयर ऑफ पुणे ब्रांच वेलकम यू ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द स्क्रीन एंड ऑल द ऑडियंस फॉर दिस वेबिनार ऑन सेक्शन वन फोर्टी एट सी ए सी वी चित्रे सर इन एबसेंशिया इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू जॉइन सोन डॉक्टर राज चावला वाइस वाइस चेयरमैन डायरेक्टर्स कमिटी आई थिंक ही इज ऑल्सो इन एबसेंशिया ही इज ऑल्सो एक्सपेक्टेड टू जॉइन सोन सी ए पंकज सोनी फॉर्मर चेयर मतलब पुणे औरंगाबाद ब्रांच से अंगेश कुमार सर ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम ऑन दिस वेबिनार ऑफ सेक्शन वन फोर्टी एट एंड वेरी रिनाउंड स्पीकर एंड फेमस स्पीकर कपिल सर कपिल गोय सर इज रियली प्लीज प्रेजेंट फॉर ऑल द ऑडियंस सर टू टू हियर फ्रॉम यू यू नो दैट एवरी चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट ऑफ ऑल ओवर इंडिया वॉन्ट टू हियर यू सर थैंक्स अ लॉट एंड वेलकम ऑन दिस वेबिनार Uh, with this, uh, is uh, Mr. C. Dr. Raj Chawla is there. Pankaj is Pankaj. Yes, Raj Chawla, sir, welcome. Mm -hmm. welcome on the seminar. Namaste, sir. Good evening. I request you to kindly give the opening remarks for this session. Over to you, C. Raj Chawla, sir. Sir, uh, you are on mute, sir. Please unmute yourself. Raj, sir, Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Samir Bhai. uh good evening to all first of all i welcome all the participants to this very hot topic uh, webinar on section 148 on income tax act aur hamare sath hamare ca advocate kapil goel ji wah kya baat hai aaj to dhamaka hone wala hai hamare webinar mein jo ki aaj tak maine dekha hai jo hamare kapil bhai ki presentation aur jo baat karne ka andaaz hai na bilkul so sir really i am very honored to have you and i also welcome all the uh, our uh, panelist on this uh, program so thank you samir bhai now you can please start sir thank you a lot as you said when kapil sir is there dhamaka to hone hi wala hai sir <laughs> kapil sir is one of the my most favorite speaker and also my, uh, most favorite speaker of uh, all all our chartered accounts from india he is yeah. no need no need to introduce uh, to uh, our chartered account community bas na naam hi kaafi hai uh, i just uh, read one uh, sentence yesterday uh, that uh, your name should reach before you reach anywhere just like kapil sir is in that uh, kapil sir that personality his name reach anywhere where whenever before he reach there so i will like to introduce you in very briefly kapil sir uh, he has uh, done completed more than 2000 seminars across the india More thousand, more than one thousand cases at appellate bodies like that, IIT, high, high, high court, and Supreme Courts. More than fifty webinars in last three four months, addressing more than fifty thousand professional across India. He has addressed session uh, session at IIT members, their dais with various eminent jurisdiction honourable judges from apex courts, high court, and IIT members, etc. He is practicing presently at Supreme Court, High Court. and uh, itt appearing across india all the viewers please send uh, your uh, queries in the chat box so we will take the questions and answer as last uh, at at the end of seminar seminar so i uh, welcome all of you again and i hand over kapil gupta sir uh, all session session to you thank you samir bhai take the charge of session over to thank you sir thank you sir thank you samir bhai am i audible yes sir okay thank you samir ji uh chawla sahab my elder brother and a very religious and a very happy soul and blessed soul whose presence always uh, is a sort of a motivation to everyone with whom uh, his company is there and in absentia our chitle sahab my handsome friend anish bhai and uh, soni sahab and my good friends from direct tax committee of institute of chartered accountants of india and all the learned and erudite participants who have joined me in this virtual webcast organized by institute of chartered accountants of india on this as you rightly say that the issue now chawla ji this has become now a very very uh, what you say uh, i will say not if i don't say disappointing situation but i would have to say that it is a challenging situation really challenging question yes so now in this challenging times on challenging times for taxpayer chawla ji 
so it's very it's a, it's definitely a matter of a great fight now you see so many notices have come in all those cases which were once settled one in, in by high court decisions that these notices uh, are bad in law are void ab initio before going into this topic because I, I maybe many of the viewers may have heard me as chavla ji institute <laughs> keeps me busy in my with me uh, as far as i am concerned i am very happy that they keep me busy with the seminars and, and i enjoy it a lot that is a mat different matter but I, i will try to start today's discussion samir bhai on a different note uh, if you go to chavla ji you will appreciate if we go to constitution of india and if we analyze three this see there are three functions ani ji there are three functions which are given in the constitution one is legislative function one is judicial function and one is executive function now you know you can note this these are these are very very interesting situation ki kaun kaun sa function ko kaise hota hai legislative action se ek baat nikal ke aaya ek judicial action hua ek executive action hua matlab three way organs hai hamare yahan legislative legislature judiciary executive aur inka apna apna kshetra rakshan hai matlab if i say in english ki that all these three organs in the constitution of india are giving are having earmarked separation of powers legislature has different powers executive has different powers and this judicial ally has different powers now you understand chavla ji before coming to supreme court decision i just want to to pose a question very interesting question because last year i was reading one allahabad high court order one allahabad high court order by some single judge justice shrivastava now in that case what was happening samir ji if that one issue came ki if if there has to be conferment of jurisdiction on a particular officer for a particular act in a particular statute it is it is by whom the jurisdiction is conferred whether judiciary can judicial action can confer jurisdiction in under a statute whether executive can confer jurisdiction on it on itself by, by its own or whether legislature is only having that competence to confer a jurisdiction on a state authority statutory authority and this is a very sharp point so the court decision was this sir ki that conferment of jurisdiction under a statute is a pure legislative function meaning thereby if in under income tax law if a reopening has to be done and a jurisdiction of reopening has to be assumed sir then it has to be a legislative act it has to be with the blessing of the legislature that a particular jurisdiction comes now that jurisdiction cannot be conferred on an authority the holds that legislative act by judiciary with due respect and by executive by itself i hope my point is well taken note of so this is this is primarily based on separation of power concept enshrined in our holy constitution of india it cannot be like this ki that executive can confer jurisdiction upon itself by its own neither judiciary can confer jurisdiction on the assessing officer i hope this point is well taken note of in the beginning itself now in this background one has to read the supreme court order with all humility and with all humbleness ki that when i come to the supreme court order now samir ji now it has some checkered history it has some history with itself now history is like this ki that in 2021 in february we had this finance bill 2021 sir which replaced the old regime of section 148 by the new regime and the cut off date was appointed as 1st april 2021 so beginning 1st april 2021 finance act 2021 said ki that this this new set of provisions of section 147 148 148 a 151 will come into operation and till 31st march 2021 the old regime was applicable so this change this paradigm shift this sea change this epochal change came up with the, uh, by finance act 2021 sir and finance act 2021 came in march 2021 as we all know and in uh, this finance bill come in february 2021 now when all this was happening when this finance act came when all these new provisions of section 147 148 148 capital a 151 took the place of the erstwhile provisions with effect from 1st april 2021 now there was a legislation which was already in place that is taxation relaxation law 2020 which was there due to this covid 
Am I there, sir? Honey ji. And then in that, there were notifications, there were extensions, time extensions given from time to time under section 3 of that taxation relaxation law, TOLA, as we say, 2020. Now, in that taxation relaxation law, 2020, in section 3, there was a power given to the government and the competent authorities, sir, that given, sir, they can extend the timelines by way of notification, etc. I hope this is well taken note of. Now, came when this Finance Act, I said, came, 2021, there were two notifications which were brought into, brought into, what you say, operation by the central government. Wide notification dated 31st March 2021 and second notification dated, sir, 27th April 2021. So, what these two notifications did, sir? These two notifications, sir, we all know, I am just recapitulating, that these two notifications, sir, Aniji, extended the time limit applicable under the old law expiring on 31st March, first to April, then to June, 30th June. So these two notifications which were issued under section 3 of the taxation relaxation law by the government under delegated legislation extended the uh, time limit uh, of old regime of section 148 from 31st March 2021 to 30th June 2021. Now, due to this time extension, due to these notifications, which became the hot bed of controversy, <laughs> because 90,000 or more than that, as we read the Supreme Court order, the figure of 90,000 notices comes from there. Because it is not, I, 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 one can have always a doubt ki where from this 90,000 notices figure came. This is given by the government to the Supreme Court of India, Justice Amar Shah and Supreme Court has noted in its order. So, in April in 2021, April in May 2021, sir, and June combined these three months, as we understand from Supreme Court decision now, 90,000 odd notices were there, which were issued in the extended time period, this disputed uh, time period of April, May, June. And since there were huge number of notices, as Supreme Court order says, there were 9,000 or more writ petitions filed by various writ petitioners and taxpayers across country in the various honorable high courts. Challenging the validity of those notices which have been issued under section 148 old law in April month, May month and June month of 2021 calendar year. And now this attracted huge litigation and huge what you say, uh, what do you say, that it, 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 it was like a docket explosion if I say in, in our legal sense because 9000 writ petitions you see. And 90,000 notices. This is the statistics as given by the Honorable Supreme Court in its order. And now, when this sojourn, I say this journey started of litigation, the bone of contention, sir, if I crystallize, it was like this to save time so that we can use more time on queries, etc. The bone of contention which was crystallized was like this, sir, that whether the issuance of those two notifications, disputed notifications and controversial notifications dated 31st March and 27th April, are with, were within the powers of the government or not to issue that notification under section 3 of taxation relaxation law when already uh, 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 there is a parliament made law by finance act 2021 which amended the statute income tax act and new provisions were replaced new provisions replaced the earlier provisions so this was the exact bone of contention i repeat Ki whether those two notifications which were issued under taxation relaxation law section 3 Co which uh, uh, almost uh, which extended the oppression uh, of this uh, old law of section 148 can it put in abeyance the parliament made law by finance act 2021 this was the question mark this was the legal quandary this was the conundrum this was the riddle which has to be solved by the various honorable high courts in the country which took so much of judicial time with due respect and now i don't know where we are heading towards that is why i was saying it's a challenging situation <laughs> You know, when we go on a road and, and that we don't know the destination of it, sometimes it causes, it creates an anxiety in the mind of it, any, any reasonable human being. So, Anish Bhai, it, your smile speaks a lot. So, that's, that's, that's how it goes. When these two notifications came, when this huge number of notices were issued, when the department used the old law after its expiry date, and already when new law was there by parliament made, parliament made law, then I believe, as the Supreme Court says, 9,000 writ petitions have been there. Now, in that, you will appreciate ki that first decision was a Chhattisgarh High Court decision of single judge Piyush Khatuja, which came against the taxpayer. 
where they said ki no this time extension was valid this was one solitary decision which came against the taxpayer although it was the beginning of this journey at the beginning of this journey i can say <laughs> the experience between the beginning and now till supreme court now the happy experience starts after this honorable chatisgarh high court decision now when the chatisgarh high court decision was already there the first favorable and first important decision or epochal decision which came from the allahabad high court honorable allahabad high court the bench of justice somat uh, the decision authored by justice somatra dial singh sd singh now in that decision that is 439 itr volume page 1 you can note down ashok kumar agarwal 439 itr page 1 in that decision the honorable allahabad high court primarily took this position and stand ki that these two notifications issued under taxation relaxation law sir could not put in abeyance the parliament made law so they struck down those notices and gave the liberty to the income tax department ki if they want to go to the re new regime then they, if the conditions of that law are satisfied 148 capital a etc then they can use it that was the summary that i'm saying telling the summary of ashok kumar agarwal decision leading decision of honorable allahabad high court 439 itr page 1 now one first decision came from allahabad high court so in this span of time chatisgarh high court was one decision which came against the taxpayer single judge then came the honorable allahabad high court decision in ashok kumar agarwal which took the this is a division bench order double bench order where they said that ki these notifications are definitely uh, what you say uh, seriously vulnerable on their validity front because already when parliament made law is their finance act 2021 this is notification cannot put in abeyance the parliament made law that is finance act 2021 now after this sir allahabad high court decision was one first decision favorable to the taxpayer then after that we had the decision of honorable delhi high court in manmohan kohli's case which also was a very detailed decision very elaborate order where huge number of litigants were there as i recall more than 1300 petitions were there more than 1300 more than 400 lawyers and more than one month hearing this is again that that was an epochal order manmohan kohli's case by justice manmohan that is 15 december 2021 order where the honorable delhi high court followed the uh, what you say the what you say ratio or the uh, followed the judgment of allahabad high court and and said the same thing ki this note two notification sir in so far as they put in abeyance the old law sorry the new law and they extended the old law it, it is ultra virus Delhi High Court clearly hold it is ultra virus and they gave liberty. It is noted by Supreme Court just by Justice M R Shah in the Supreme Court decision in this order of Supreme Court. It is noted that Delhi High Court has given liberty to the department. If they if they so feel, then they can go to 148 new law and 148 A. And if it is done, then assessee can also come back for the writ, challenge it if the, that is not in accordance with the new law. So it is not like this that Allahabad High Court did not protect the interests of the revenue. They gave the liberty to the department. In my humble opinion. and delhi high court also gave the liberty and that liberty sir is given by other high courts also which struck down these notices sir so after the, uh, this what you say allahabad high court delhi high court then in january 2022 sir hani ji that we had now calcutta high court and this rajasthan high court one of the very important orders i want to say sir it's this rajasthan high court order in case of sudesh taneja sir one must note this order and i have said in various seminars sir this or uh, sudesh taneja's case is one of the most important and worth reading order sir sudesh taneja's case and in that decision of sudesh taneja the honorable rajasthan high court justice akil qureshi has taken lot of pains to analyze ki that what are the core principles of section 148 which should be kept in mind and then following allahabad high court and delhi high court the uh, division bench of uh, rajasthan high court honorable rajasthan high court in sudesh taneja also took the same path charted the same path anish ji that these notices are invalid but i want to say one thing very important sir anish bhai this this rajasthan high court decision i am i am telling you sir this has very serious implication for today's discussion because when we will go to this issue and country na ki sir whether this assessment year 13 14 and 14 15 and 15 16 which is the main question troubling the mind of various tax payers and tax consultant so this this decision of sudesh taneja will help you a lot to 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 try to address this query and what is so important in this sudesh taneja's case para 37 it's a lengthy order but this paragraph 37 of this order in my humble opinion sir is 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 a what you say na is break is 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 that point where we get that clue ki that department and cbdt in its latest instruction has wrongly interpreted section 149 1b first proviso 
सो पैरा थर्टी सेवन ऑफ सुदेश तनेजा राजस्थान हाईकोर्ट ऑर्डर इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डिसीजन टू माई माइंड सर वेयर दिस इश्यू वेयर वेयर वन कैन गेट दिस पॉइंट कि दैट वेदर असेसमेंट इयर थर्टीन फोर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन एंड फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन आर टाइम बार्ड और नॉट विद इन द मीनिंग ऑफ सेक्शन वन फोर्टी नाइन सब सेक्शन वन क्लॉज बी फर्स्ट प्रोवाइजो एंड विच इज रॉन्गली इंटरप्रिटेड बाय सीबीडीटी इन इट्स इंस्ट्रक्शन नंबर वन ऑब्लिक टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू डेटेड ग्यारह मई दो हजार बाईस आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट सर सो दिस राजस्थान हाई कोर्ट डिसीजन बाय जस्टिस अकील कुरेशी जस्टिस अकील कुरेशी एज आई नो एंड मेनी ऑफ द फ्रेंड विल बी नोइंग Justice Akhil Qureshi was one judge who has headed the tax bench in Gujarat for a number of years and Bombay also. And then, in then his lordship was there in Chief Justice. He has recently retired. So this decision is penned down by Justice Akhil Qureshi, and he was equally uh, uh, what do you say? That this decision has gets beauty because Justice Samir Jain was also there. I am told that he he is also a tax. I mean, he is also having very good command on accounts and taxation. Justice Samir Jain. so this this decision assumes serious importance uh, for any academician or any person who wants to learn more of, about 148 because this also discusses at length the rudimentary and fundamental principles of section 148 in place sir as i said para 37 one para 31 can also be kept in mind sir para 31 and then in this decision itself somewhere sir it is stated ki that whether 148 a naya wala karna hai उसमें जो रिलाइड अपॉन इंफॉर्मेशन का भी इश्यू आएगा हमारे सामने जी दैट जस्टिस कुरेशी हैज वेरी ब्यूटीफुली सेट कि ऑल दो इट इज नॉट सो मच स्टेटेड इन सो मेनी वर्ड्स इन द न्यू लॉ अंडर सेक्शन 148 कैपिटल ए क्लॉज बी शो कॉज नोटिस दैट रिलाइड अपॉन इंफॉर्मेशन हैज टू बी गिवन बट इट हैज टू बी रेड इन द लॉ टू मेक इट मीनिंगफुल अपॉर्चुनिटी सो सी द फार साइटेडनेस ऑफ द लर्नेट जज He at that time in January 2022 when there was no challenge even to 148A was not there before them they were old notice but still they came out ki what how 149 subsection 1b first proviso has to be interpreted a and how 148 capital a clause b show cause notice has to be in compliance with principle of natural justice and audi ultram partum so in my humble opinion i am i am diet fan of justice kurishi this is a worth a reading order sir a magnum opus to my sense in locus classicus now and you know when we talk about anish bhai that this judgments and uh, some kind of judgments are there ki jo kabhi section change bhi ho jata hai kuch bhi hota hai par wo judgment rehta hai uska sense rehta hai wo wo locus classicus bola jata hai usko magnum opus bolte hain so justice kureshi's order of sudesh taneja is no less than any magnum opus and locus classicus to my sense any how i will go further in the journey so that allahabad came delhi came Calcutta came, Rajasthan High Court, Sudesh Tanaja came, then Madras High Court, Justice Bandari's decision in Velour Technology came, and then, of lately we have decision of uh, this Bombay High Court in Tata Communication by Justice K R Shri Ram, and then Karnataka High Court decision by Justice Alok Arade. So this completes the chain of the decisions of the various High Courts, sir, which came successively and consecutively. in the favor of the taxpayer striking down and holding these notices issued in the extended period of april may and june month to be ultra virus to be illegal to be unlawful as they are issued in that period when already old law has been expired so we have to keep this in mind ki that allahabad delhi rajasthan calcutta madras bombay karnataka so at least and you will also see from honorable supreme court decision they have given a table of the cases where eight high court decisions are eight high court decisions are mentioned at paragraph 2 so although supreme court was having slp against allahabad high court order but it was brought to their notice lordship's decision uh, notice that various other high courts including delhi high court and other high court have taken the same position so supreme court decision uh, anish ji was very clearly said ki that it will applicable to pan india and all those cases will be also now governed whether it is delhi high court or any other high court so the supreme court very clearly made it it is applicable pan india and it will govern all those cases also where writs are pending and it will also apply to those those cases which are already decided even though slp is not there before the supreme court that is very clearly written by justice mr shah in the order in his order so now what i say the, now in this background short background and prefatory background now the supreme court how this battle now reached to supreme court department filed one slp sir specially petition against allahabad high court decision that is now the decision of the name of the decision which we are discussing today is union of india versus ashish agarwal 4th may 2022 order now this is the decision of supreme court of india which is given in the case by double bench 
in the case of Union of India versus Ashish Agarwal. Now, if I try to analyze this decision from a, uh, what do you say, from a very objective sense and a balanced sense, then it, be, it, it is like this. I believe there is, there is, this decision is primarily preordained or what do you say, uh, uh, what do you say, is primarily uh, s s driven by Article 142. Because in opening itself, the Honorable Supreme Court Justice Shah cleared that this decision is decided uh, given some kind of uh, via media. And this he said in, this he has said very categorically to be noted in paragraph 2.1 page 7. He has very clearly said in para 2.1 page 7 that uh, we are re uh, writing this judgment. Rakesh Ji, Namaskar. We are writing, uh, uh, I am seeing him. Para 2.1 is the decision in the decision of Supreme Court. It is primarily, pre uh, what do you say, a, 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 is thought process is governed by Article 142. Now, how Article 142 came into place? Because I was, sir, one of the one of the small part in the proceedings. Because we, our chamber also filed one intervention application before the Supreme Court on behalf of one of the SSE who got favorable decision from Delhi High Court to intervene in the matter. So I was part of the proceedings of the Supreme Court completely from beginning till end. So I was there in the first row to witness everything that has happened. I, in my humble opinion, the starting point which the revenue took was this, sir. The department read the decision of Delhi High Court before the Supreme Court, sir. Mr. ASG, the Venkat Raman sahab, read before the Honorable Supreme Court, ki sahab, we will make our argument from the base, or based on Delhi High Court decision. Although it is another matter that SLP was filed against, Allahabad High Court. So what, what Mr. ASG opened the argument from revenue side, who are the appellant? Revenue was appellant in this matter. So revenue opened up the argument like this, ki sir, Delhi High Court Manmohan Kohli's case, in one of the paragraph, Anish Bhai says, ki that this is a procedural section, and any change in the procedural section would be applicable to the pending proceeding also, and it will apply retrospectively. So that paragraph was, uh, what do you say, highlighted by, ingeminated by the revenue before the Honorable Supreme Court from ASG side, ki that once this is held to be a procedural change, although it was not the only point which Delhi High Court said, Delhi High Court said lot many other things also. Yes, to, when they gave reasoning, they, it, is, it was one of the reasoning in the Manmohan Kohli's case, ki since this change which happened from 1st April 2021 in section 148, since it is a procedural change, it will apply to all the proceedings which are pending proceedings even, and it will have a retrospective implication. So now what department said, ki, sir, even if we have procedurally made a mistake, then it should not ha haunt us. It should not kill our remedy. It should not be detrimental to revenues or exchequer's interest. That was how this entire thing get, what you say, diverted to that thought process, ki, how, uh, now to Article 142 line some, somewhere. Ki Delhi High Court said since it's a procedural change, and so it should be, now procedure is the handmaid of justice, they say. Now, procedure should be for justice to the department and justice to the SSE. That is how revenue brought its argument before the Supreme Court, sir. Although I have said you that this is not the, sorry, with due respect, this is not the only way or this is not the correct way, right, correct, fully correct way to appreciate the sense of the provision, sir. Because, uh, Anish Bhai, you will appreciate that as I told you, section 148 gives confer, confer jurisdiction on the AO to reopen an assessment. And jurisdiction, I have already told in the beginning, is a matter of legislative act. It cannot be conferred by judiciary or uh, executive. So, keeping that in mind, separation of power wala point constitutional norm, cherished norm. Now, just saying it is to procedural change, then it, it, I believe it, it is not appreciating the sense of judicial provision, judicial point. In law, when we read any, any provision, sir, there is a special significance of what is called as judicial issue and what is called as non judicial issue. In my humblest of humblest and little and limited understanding, this 148 notice is a judicial point. To de-escalate and to say it and to reduce it to just procedural level, I am sorry it is not doing, it is not an honest uh, treatment to the 148. Because nature of uh, proceeding under 148 when no 148 notice is given, is it a, is it a mere procedural notice? 
It is not a judicial notice. I am asking a question to myself. So, anyhow, you will say, Mr. Goel, now what happens? The Supreme Court order has already come. Anyhow, this is an academic point and also an important issue. Whether judicial can be, uh, how judicial issue and how judicial point and how judicial act has to be appreciated. Or how flaw in a judicial act has to be taken up. In my humble opinion, 148 notice remains a judicial issue, sir. And there are Supreme Court decisions by larger bench, sir. Which have hold section 148 is a judicial notice. If I am to tell one decision, you can note down why Narayan Chetty, three judge bench, Supreme Court of India, 35 ITR, page number 288. Long back said that 148 notice is not merely a procedural notice, it's a judicial notice. That is why Narayan Chetty, three judge bench, Supreme Court of India, 35 ITR, 288. So, oh, now revenue said to the Supreme Court, the Honorable Supreme Court, uh, ASD sahab ki sahab, this is a procedural change bola, to abhi ko, something should be uh, done to save the, what you say, to salvage the situation, to give remedy to the department. These all words are used by Supreme Court judgment also, I am not giving it from my side, they are all part of now order also, that to salvage the situation or what you say, to give remedy to the revenue or to what you say, to pre prevent the loss of exchequer, these are the, these are the terms with due respect attracts lot of academic attention also. So now when Supreme, this limited argument was taken up uh, Anish by nothing about taxation, election law, nothing about TOLA, nothing about section 3 TOLA, notifications, time extension and to my utter surprise when CBDT brings all these things, I am surprised why, how this comes up reincarnates, how this recircates, when before Supreme Court department's case was also not that, how this has come up. Nowhere an inch of word was spoken, if one remembers and recalls in hindsight what happened and transpired in Supreme Court, there was no single whisper of word on TOLA and the notification issued under there and on this time extension. Only thing which was debated and argued was ki how to now remedy the situation, how to salvage the situation, how to prevent the loss of the exchequer. And then this thing gathered to Article 142 in a, in a what you say, in a very different fashion. See, I am not an expert of Constitution of India, A. And I am not having very good knowledge of constitutional provisions, I cannot command that. And secondly, this Article 142 is something to be <clears throat> confabulated and, uh, what you say, cogitated by someone who is, who is a constitutional uh, maestro. So, by, but my little limited knowledge says about Article 142 ki, that this is a power given for complete justice. And it has to be used in exceptional and rare circumstances, it cannot be used in a routine manner. That is a settled principle. It is a complete justice power, plenary jurisdiction of Supreme Court. So, but anyhow, Supreme Court felt this is a fit case in its own wisdom. Ki that yes, there is a lot of loss of revenue and exchequer and there is no remedy now left to the revenue and it is injustice to the revenue. So, they brought, as the order says, ki that Article 142 is coming into place. So, when you read a judgment which is governed by Article 142, how its ratio dissidentity has to come, it has to be kept in close mind. And secondly, when all these things were debated, argued and contested in a limited manner, in a very, very, what you say, confined manner. So, Honorable Supreme Court, as we read uh, Nish by this entire Supreme Court order, paragraph 7 and paragraph 8 are very important. Which is the main decision, which is the main decision, which is the main decision, but the main decision ka paragraph is 7 or 8. In paragraph number 7, in paragraph number 8, the Honorable Supreme Court has very clearly said, sir, let us come to what Supreme Court holds in fine. Supreme Court says in para 7, the high courts were right. That yes, this change made by Finance Act 2021, sir, it is benevolent change. It is benevolent change, I will read. Para 7, what it says? Thus, the new provisions substituted by Finance Act 2021 being remedial and benevolent in nature and substituted with a specific aim and object to protect the rights and interests of the SSE as well as the same being in public interest means that it's a remedial provision, it's a benevolent provision, it's a substituted with aim and object to protect the rights and interests of the SSE as well as being in public interest. Then High Court say, the Supreme Court says Honorable, the respective High Courts have rightly held that benefit of new provisions shall be made available even in respect of the proceedings relating to past assessment year, provided notice under section 148 has been issued on or after HR case. 1st April 2021. Meaning thereby they say, there the Supreme Court has given its imprimatur and approval to all the high court decisions which they have noted otherwise in opening paragraph 2. That those, all our decisions are approved by the Supreme Court, expressly approved, not impliedly approved. 
इन सो फार एज दे होल्ड की दैट आफ्टर फर्स्ट अप्रैल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन कट ऑफ डेट द न्यू लॉ नोटिस हैज टू बी इश्यूड नॉट ओल्ड लॉ एम आई क्लियर अबाउट इट दिस इज लॉक्ड हेयर दिस इज नॉट अनलॉक्ड एनी वेयर एल्स देन पैरा सेवन देन नेक्स्ट लाइन सेज वी आर इन कंप्लीट एग्रीमेंट विद व्यू टेकन बाई वेरियस हाईकोर्ट इन होल्डिंग सो पैरा एट सेज द ओपनिंग पैरा एट सेज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट However, at the same time, the judgments of several high courts would result in no reassessment proceedings at all, even if the same are permissible under Finance Act 2021 and as per Substituted Section 147 to 151 of the Act. They mean to say that due to high court judgment, it might be possible that now 148 could not be taken in the new law also. The revenue cannot be made remitless. This is where the point of debate comes, and some people have different thoughts also and sentiments. The revenue cannot be made remedyless, and the object and purpose of reassessment proceedings cannot be frustrated. I have already given my sentiment in academic and humble, most humble and most respectful manner that this may require further debate and might be, if we, in case this matter goes to higher bench or larger bench or constitutional bench, this point has to be debated. If whether revenue cannot be made remedyless and the object or purpose of reassessment proceedings cannot be frustrated, can can be a ground to invoke Article 142. All these things. It is true. Now, Anish, by next line says it is true that due to a bona fide mistake and in view of subsequent extension of time by various notifications, bona fide mistake. Now, Supreme Court says it might be a bona fide mistake. This is also a very interesting word. The revenue issued the impugned notices under 148 after the amendment was enforced with effect from 1 Jan 2021 under the unamended section 148. Now, kindly note this line, sir. Please take note of para 8, page 26. This very important line, Anish, but says in our view. The same out not to have been issued under the unamended act, same out to have been issued under the substituted provision of 147 to 151 of Income Tax Act as amended by Finance Act 2021. Iska kya matlab hua? What does this mean? It means Supreme Court is very clearly saying here that whatever notices were issued by the Income Tax Department in April month, May month, and June month of 2021, they notices out to have been issued under the new law. Am I there? तो दिस डिबेट ऑफ विच सिबिलिटी इंस्ट्रक्शन हैज नाउ ब्रॉड कि नहीं साहब ये टोला वाला कहां से आ गया फिर फिर तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने गलत लिखा है देन सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट इज रॉन्ग देन वी आर रीराइटिंग सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑर्डर सॉरी आर यू आर वी सेइंग दैट कि दैट इन दैट प्रोसेस व्हेन सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज वंस होल्ड बाय वन वन लाइन और सॉरी वन एट वन प्लेस कि दैट ओल्ड लॉ कुड नॉट हैव बीन अप्लाइड आफ्टर 1 अप्रैल 2021 बाय व्हाट मींस टोला एंड एक्सटेंशन नोटिफिकेशन सरवाइव नाउ they are not writing in para 7 only they are all right repeating in para 8 i am saying this ki the notices after 1st april out to have been issued under the amended provision of uh, finance act 2021 not under the unamended provision that is clear page 26 para 8 and para 7 in my respectful humble and sincere opinion this locks that point ki that high courts were right tola notification was wrong time extension was wrong and notices should have been out to have been issued have used the same phrase out to have been issued under the new law now now comes the mercy or sorry what you say now comes the supreme court lenient view towards the revenue supreme court says the high court went wrong in quashing the notices they out to have converted the notices from 148 to section 148 capital a in the same a paragraph 8 they have said the lordships have said ki that while high court when they say that ki these notices were wrongly issued under the old regime they while uh, instead of quashing they should have changed the notice that is why i am saying ki this 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 is again a very serious issue ki whether this act by judicial act can you convert a notice from the one provision to the other provision or it should be done by legislature or it should be done by executive or it should be done by judiciary i am sorry i am not no i am saying in a very humble manner having very little understanding having very limited understanding having hollow understanding you give me all respect but point is this ki that sahab abhi legislative abhi to a decision aa gaya hai ab bolenge usme kya hua gul sahab abhi aage review ke liye ja sakta hai nahi ho ja sakta wo ek alag bhavishya ka baat hai abhi to main kisi ko nahi pata bhavishya mein kya hona hai what is happen to future i am no uh, we can't astrology but any house yes this is a very very important issue sir when a jurisdiction has to be conferred on a particular authority under a statute it has to be conferred by legislature question mark it has to be done by judiciary question mark it has to be done by executive question mark in my understanding our constitution of india is very clear sir it is legislature only and that is why anish bhai i just told that allahabad high court order ki jurisdiction cannot be conferred otherwise 
any of the supreme court says why supreme court says you know supreme court has written that there may be a they say there appears to be a genuine non application of the non amendments now please note this line there appears to be genuine non application of the amendments as the officers of the revenue may have been under a bona fide belief that amendments may not yet have been enforced i'm sorry see as i was there in the court nowhere revenue pleaded that this was a bona fide mistake or i can say in humble words chaste words ki that it was never the case of the revenue before the high courts that this was the innocuous act or inadvertent what you say or a fortuitous and accidental some kind of a what you say fortuitous thing rather they hotly contested and they say ki we are right we are right in issuing the notifications we are right in issuing the old law notices we are right in not showing obeisance to the law made by the parliament of the country what is this obeisance i don't know matlab <laughs> i am not i am not understanding the obeisance is towards towards parliament made law or obeisance is towards the notification issued by central government anyhow now honorable supreme court says in the order therefore instead of questioning and setting aside the reassessment notices high courts out to have passed an order construing the notices under as those deemed to be issued now kindly appreciate anish bhai as an academician humble academician i say this this paragraph is definitely difficult to digest as far as basic rudimentary principle of law is concerned how you are converting one provision of notice to the other provision of the notice what is the constitutional backup for that what is the basic jurisprudence jurisprudence already settled it is not like this 148 income tax law has first time reached the supreme court sir i'm sorry if you go to commentaries of prithi sarya chaturvedi the one of the largest thick thick volume and mr datar commentary now kanga palki wala any commentary any leading commentary Uh, on income tax 148 section sir you will find that this 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 has been uh, matlab there has been series of judgments of supreme court which has debated analyzed the nature of 148 proceeding sir any house the supreme court has said in para 8 ki yes they have these notices out to have been issued under the new law after 1st april high court were not right in not uh, high court were not right in questioning and setting aside the notices they should have converted it to and deemed to have been issued under the new uh, new law now while saying so i will just draw attention of my all viewers and it's very important point i'm telling you sir now when they have said it <coughs> niji <coughs> what they have said on page 27 they say revenue out to have been permitted to proceed further with the reassessment notices as per substituted provision of section 147 to 151 as per finance act 2021 means ki that when they say the supreme court says ki that it out to have been converted they were very clear in their mind ki that new regime has to be strictly complied with and new regime of kaun sa new regime which new regime entire new regime are you getting my point entire new regime means new 147 section new 148 section new 148 capital a section new 140 Nine section. This is the most important point. I am not saying anything from myself. So I will repeat. They say in para eight, page twenty seven, revenue out to have been permi permitted to proceed further with the reassessment proceeding as per substituted provision of section one forty seven to one fifty one as per finance act twenty twenty one. Comma subject to compliance of all the procedural requirements and defences which may be available. Please note this line. Which may be available to the assessee under the substituted provisions of section 157 to 151, and which may be available under Finance Act and in law. Sir, this this sentence is is very clear. It says even if these provisions are to be converted as Supreme Court opines to the new regime, then they have to be strictly in compliance with the mandate and command of section 147 to 151 as amended by Finance Act 2021. That is FA 2021. and all defenses which are available to the assessee here there is no talk about revenue sorry the confusion is added because when we read in para 10 and when we go to para 10.4 where they say that ki as available to the assessee and revenue also they have at the word so please sorry this is not the way i have to read a judgment like a whole in my humble and respectful submission to my viewers para 8 is very clear the defense is defense to the assessee sir we cannot rewrite supreme court order sir we at least we don't i we don't have that audacity and impunity to rewrite the supreme court decision so in my opinion para 7 and para 8 four five principles comes out sir first principle is this all those high court decisions are given approval on principle ground that notices out to have been issued under the new law not cannot be issued under the old law after 1st april 2021 
सेकेंड पॉइंट सुप्रीम कोर्ट से दैट वाइल होल्डिंग दैट दे आउट टू हैव इश्यूड अंडर द न्यू लॉ इट इज वेरी क्लियर दे हैव टू बी स्ट्रिक्टली इन कंप्लायंस विद द एंटायर न्यू रिजीम ऑफ सेक्शन 147 टू 151 फिफ्टी वन एज अमेंडेड बाई फाइनेंस एक्ट ट्वेंटी सर इंक्लूडिंग सेक्शन वन न्यू लॉ and there is no whisper in all this para 7 and para 8 about taxation relaxation law 2020 and tola and all those notifications which to my point is extraneous and irrelevantly brought into the place now you can come to para 10 para 8 there is a draft think they proposed para 10 is the confirmed directions of the supreme court which has now been interpreted by cbdt in its latest instruction dated 11th may 2022 now para 10 if i summarize uh, anish bhai quickly very quickly uh, what it says para 10 says ki sab this judgment which uh, now this appeals of department are partly allowed what is partly allowed partly allowed means para 7 they say uh, they are principally agreeing with high court but they are converting notices from 148 old law to new law so that is why it is partly allowed as we know how to interpret the word partly allowed i believe all are clear about it para 10 supreme court decision says samir bhai partly partly allowed now in para 10 there are four significant directions sir now first important point they say ki sab all these notices which are issued within the chitle sab welcome aapka swagat Nam- hai bhai sahab ha namaste namaste kapil bhai thank you aap gwati akele akele ghum rahe hain hamar ko to lekar hi nahi gaye aapko hi leke jana tha अगर आपका तबीयत ठीक चल रहा है आई प्लीज प्लीज टेक आई एम वेरी आपका तबीयत ठीक नहीं चल रहा मैं तो ठीक हूं वेलकम चिते सर आई एक्नॉलेज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सेंट्रल काउंसिल मेंबर एंड द डायरेक्टर्स कमेटी चेयरमैन सीवी सीवी चिते सर वेलकम सर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स थैंक यू और द कपिल सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो आई वाज जस्ट सबमिटिंग कि पैरा 10 का फर्स्ट पॉइंट सर चिते साहब वी वर डिस्कसिंग सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑर्डर so now we yes, have come yes. to para 10 yes. para 7 para 8 okay. i have explained and the okay. background of the decision i have explained sir completely now para 10 yeah. says sir it is a partly allowed appeal and in that the supreme court has given four significant direction one of the first important direction is this and this is under article 142 they are giving they are using their plenary power of complete justice and that is what they have said that lordships have said that we are doing to give remedy to the revenue and to prevent the exchequer loss Okay. now it it is another matter debate i have already said it lies up ki some various chartered accountants and our fellow colleagues have asked me ki mr goel whether it was a fit case for use of article 142c i am i am i have already said a humble point i am nobody to comment upon it but yes our scholastic or what you say academic understanding says ki that no article 142 should not have been used just for sake of protection of revenue because that is like this ki that if i am going to a court samir bhai and i am asking for justice ki that this is wrong happened to me then court says ki no <laughs> if it is in right wrongly applied provision let us hunt which could be the right provision is it is it the way a petitioner will go to the high court for, under a writ jurisdiction i'm sorry i ask a question humble man and as an academician so anyhow this is this is this answers that query ki whether it could be a case for article 142 and even justice amr shah himself in supreme court has said that article 142 cannot be applied just for sake of sake of it and just for equity you cannot supplant the law when there is a statute in place you cannot go to article 142 to replace it that is what justice amr shah in in a one order of the supreme court while authoring a order he has himself said and negated application of article 142 to bypass the statutory mandate and those decisions are there so any house now it is a larger debate or an academic question now more of an academic question and is it whether article 142 could not could have been resorted as it has been used in the present case for sake of giving remedy to revenue and for sake of revenue loss or exchequer loss and exchequer loss is which exchequer loss abhi to 148 ka notice aaya tha assessment to hua nahi wo exchequer loss kaha bana ye bhi question hamara chartered accountant bhai puch rahe hain dost puch rahe hain chaliye पैरा टेन का पहला डायरेक्शन सर दीज नोटिस विच आर इश्यूड फ्रॉम फर्स्ट अप्रैल टू थर्टी एथ जून आर कंस्ट्रूड एज नोटिस अंडर वन फोर्टी एट कैपिटल ए क्लॉज बी आई रिपीट द नोटिस इज इश्यूड अंडर द ओल्ड रिजीम फ्रॉम पीरियड ऑफ फर्स्ट अप्रैल टू पीरियड ऑफ थर्टी एथ अप्रैल विल बी कंस्ट्रूड एज नोटिस इज इश्यूड अंडर द ओल्ड न्यू लॉ अंडर वन फोर्टी एट कैपिटल ए क्लॉज बी दिस इज दिस इज फ्लो चार्ट पॉइंट नंबर वन पॉइंट नंबर टू 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट से इज वट एवर दे हैव विद दम डिपार्टमेंट इन नेम ऑफ रीजन टू बिलीव इंफॉर्मेशन एक्सेट्रा ब्ला 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 दे विल नाउ वट यू से प्रोसेस इट एंड गिव इट टू द टेक्स पेयर अंडर वन फोर्टी एट कैपिटल ए क्लॉज बी एज पर सुप्रीम कोर्ट डायरेक्टिव टू द टेक्स पेयर एज इंफॉर्मेशन वर्ड इंफॉर्मेशन सजेस्टिंग एस्केपमेंट ऑफ इनकम You will say how Mr. Goel reason to believe will be transformed into information suggesting escapement of income. Please do see. I can answer only that thing which is in my hey, what do you say uh, capacity to answer. Abhi department to karne bhi lag gaya ho. De bhi diya sab logon ko bhi to bahut notices mein aa gaya information. Wo kaise aaya? Wo to aise aaya supply of information as per honorable Supreme Court decision aur wo information ke naam pe aise. Ani bhai sahi aise rahe ho. Do line aa gaya batayiye. Kya information hua? As you are rightly laughing. and you rightly uh, giving this em emotion emoji but it is it it reflects a lot see now it is sorry to say supreme court direction was not this ki this sharing of information has not to be meaningful and effective sharing it has to be effective sir because it has to be in compliance with 148 capital a clause b mandate why otherwise supreme court have wrote ki within 30 days you have to complete this exercise for upper india cases and provide information uh, to the tax payers now in name of supply of information samir bhai abhi wo information kya aa raha hai wo do line likh ke aa raha hai do line samajhte hain aap तो अल्फाज लिख के आ रहा है इट एज 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 लिमिटेड एज उसे उसको समझ पाना किसी भी मेरे जैसे आदमी के लिए बड़ा मुश्किल है सर फॉर मी इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड आई से इट विद ऑल ह्यूमिलिटी आई कॉन्ट अंडरस्टैंड इट वो तो लिखा है कि इन्फॉर्मेशन आ गया अभी आपका स्केपमेंट हो गया भैया उसको इन्फॉर्मेशन कहां से आया वो रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी का क्राइटेरिया फुलफिल करता है या नहीं करता है वो रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी नहीं पता आज तक हमारे को मैं तो कई बार समझ समझने का कोशिश किया हूं कि वो जो नया लॉ है उसमें 148 का एक्सप्लेनेशन वन है जिसमें रिस्क एंड मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी का बात है वो रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी के तो दर्शन आज तक हमें हुए नहीं चिटले साहब वो डिपार्टमेंट तो बताने को तैयार ही नहीं है रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी कैसे बनी उसका क्या कॉन्टोर है वो बैलेंस ऑब्जेक्टिव तरीके से बनी नहीं बनी और उसको बनाते वक्त उसका क्राइटेरिया क्या और वो जो आज इन्फॉर्मेशन आप मुझे दे रहे हो वो उस रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी के हिसाब से कंप्लाइंट है या नहीं ये, ये कहां सुनिश्चित किया गया है वेर इट इज एंश्योर सॉरी सर यस आरटीआई करना चाहिए क्या लोगों को नहीं नहीं पर, पर, से मंगवा ले नहीं पर चिटले जी मैं इस पर बड़ा लार्जर इश्यू आई वॉन्ट यू ड्रॉ योर अटेंशन सर मैं कल परसों से एक आई वॉज देर इन राजस्थान हाईकोर्ट चिटले साहब And एंड आई वॉज हैविंग वन रेट एंड आई एम टेलिंग माई व्यूअर्स टू पे अटेंशन टू माई वर्ड्स बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट चीज मैं बताना लगाऊ सर आई वेंट टू राजस्थान हाई कोर्ट फॉर माई केसेज ऑफ वन फोर्टी एट ए रेट देर वॉज वन रिट पिटिशन सर माया राठी माई फ्रेंड्स कैन नोट द नेम ऑफ दिस केस माया राठी एंड चिटले साहब इट इज इट इज फॉर्ट बाय इट इज आर्ग्यूड बाय आवर गुड फ्रेंड मिस्टर वेदांत अग्रवाल द सन ऑफ सतीश गुप्ता जी our past central council member and he has pleaded this case before the bench of rajasthan high court justice chief acting chief justice maninder mohan shrivastav and justice samir jain and i am telling about this development dated 23 mai 2022 23 mai 2022 2 3 days back what was the issue chitle sahab in this case this uh, our uh, this vidhan bhai in maya rathi case challenged the constitutional validity of section 148 explanation 1 and proviso ki sahab they have made this explanation in a faulty manner and this itself requires constitutional scrutiny whether this test of information suggesting escapement of income under 148 section its proviso and explanation is constitutionally right or wrong i am happy to share ki that this rajasthan high court has issued the notice on the well uh, petition of the sesi and asked the government of india union of india to file its reply to justify how this new explanation in 148 is constitutionally not arbitrary and as per article article 14 it is a right law if i go deeper and dive deeper into this now this is a very important development maya rathi versus ito the interim order is dated 23 may 2022 where constitutional validity of new law has to be tested now before rajasthan high court now what i say rani ji it's a different perspective chitle sahab now you see read a section 148 explanation 1 it says for the purposes of this section and 148 a the information suggesting escapement of income uh, the information suggesting escapement of income means so and so first clause says any information any information i will read that line and it says sir any information it's a very diff different line any information in the case of the assessy for the relevant assessment year in accordance with risk management strategy formulated by board from time to time sir first my question is this where is this risk management strategy defined in the statute 
how legislature has delegated this power to the board without defining risk management strategy and its broad guidelines and this kind of delegation is constitutionally valid or not are you getting my point this is a very very serious question ki aap legislature ek power de raha hai board ko ki wo risk management strategy banayega और रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी जो बनेगी उसके बेसिस पे इंफॉर्मेशन फ्लैश होगी या बेसिस बनेगा 148 का एंड आई एम आई एम से हम्बली सबमिटिंग कि व्हाट व्हाट इज द बेसिस ऑफ फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ दिस रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी क्वेश्चन वेदर इट इज विद इन द कॉम्पिटेंस ऑफ द लेजिस्लेचर टू डेलीगेट दिस काइंड ऑफ ओमनी बस पावर टू द सीबीडीटी टू फॉर्मुलेट द स्ट्रेटेजी दिस इज अ मूट पॉइंट एंड व्हाई नॉट टिल डेट इन नेम ऑफ ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड पब्लिक ट्रांसपेरेंसी दिस इज बीइंग शेयर्ड विद द इन पब्लिक डोमेन वेयर इज दिस and when lakhs of notices are already issued on basis of 148 and risk management strategy i'm sorry kitle sahab already when so much notices aapne bhi mere itne seminar kara liye sahab but ye risk management strategy ke to darshan ho hi nahi rahe ye kaisa ye aisa lag raha hai ki jaise bhagwan vishnu aur bhagwan brahma vishnu mahesh sabse upar ka kuch cheez hai sir chaliye isse meri wo baat aapko samajh mein aayegi ki risk management strategy ke definition nahi hai रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी का गाइडलाइन नहीं है रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी ही नहीं पता है मार्को और सब कुछ रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी कर रही है और जब हम सुप्रीम कोर्ट से वो जो पुराना वाला नोटिस है वो नए लॉ में कन्वर्ट हो रहा है और उसकी इंफॉर्मेशन आज हम मुझे आ रही है तो मुझे यह भी नहीं पता चल पा रहा है मैं चेक नहीं कर पा रहा हूं एज एन इफेक्टेड पर्सन अनि जी की क्या वो जो इंफॉर्मेशन मुझे आज दी गई है वो इस रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी के हिसाब से सही थी या नहीं है आप नोट कर रहे हैं चेकलिस्ट का पॉइंट नंबर वन कि वेन दिस सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट इज नाउ इंप्लीमेंटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड दिस इनकम टैक्स ऑफिशियल आर इज इट विद इज इट ऑब्जेक्टिवली एंश्योर्ड कि दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन फॉल्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ब्रैकेट ऑफ रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी फॉर्मुलेटेड बाय द बोर्ड फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम एक्सप्लेनेशन वन टू वन फोर्टी एट क्लॉज वन सो आई होप माई पॉइंट इज टेकन ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेज ओल्ड नोटिस अंडर वन फोर्टी एट विल बी कंस्ट्रूड एज न्यू नोटिस अंडर वन फोर्टी एट they have dispensed for one time for one time the inquiry under 148 capital a clause a prior inquiry has been dispensed as one time is third they say that entire information which is available with the department now please note anish bhai whenever this information is practically coming to us nowadays in humongous manner and gargantuan manner in my humble opinion that information is a very very limited information firstly it is not complete information secondly that information is so narrow and so non descript that it is very difficult for any reasonable person to make out what is the case against him so sir i should always ask anish bhai whenever i reply to these notices ki that please give me first complete relied upon information i hope my point is well taken by my viewer chatile sahab ki that when the supreme court judgment is applied by the aos and information is shared and that information looks like that it is not complete information then a request should be made a preliminary request should be made that complete relied upon information must be confronted shared and provided and purveyed to the taxpayer now supreme court says all these exercise of the, all these exercises of giving information has to be done within 30 days of the order in my opinion hanish bhai that deadline is a strict deadline If this deadline is missed, in my opinion, many friends have asked me that Goel Sab, if this point, like someone has asked me, has not been met, then he should get his moksh. He should get his moksh. He should get his moksh. Or he should get his moksh. Or he should get his moksh. I am not saying that this will happen. I have asked people, Mr. Goel, tell us if this information does not come within 30 days, can we have now? proper sleep or we can feel relaxed in my humble opinion yes because supreme court judgment gives strict deadline it has to be followed word by word inch by inch and word by word sir if that information does not come in any case of notice under first of, uh, old law of first april uh, 230 june then hani ji that goes in my opinion they you will become functus officio i hope this word is noted functus officio so supreme court says first this notice under old law will be construed as notice under the new law then the relevant information in the possession of the ao will have to be purveyed to the taxpayer within the 30 days of the judgment of the supreme court and in my humble opinion that information has to be shared properly completely transparently and fairly so as to make it meaningful sharing of information it cannot be like this ki that they have kept some things with themselves in the sleeves and something is shared 
Now, it is our duty also to point out that it looks like that it is not complete information or something. As, as I also say, that whether this information comes in the compliance with the of risk management strategy, that point has also to be taken note of. In the replies to be submitted. Now, what Supreme Court says, within so, 15 uh, days... Sorry, yes, so sir, yes, sir. Uh, when this information receives, should we also say that, also demonstrate that it is uh, within the uh, parameters of risk management strategy? Absolutely, Chitlesa, because otherwise it makes uh, it, 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 it all becomes upside down. What is the fun of getting to, to, to transmit it to new law? Because new law has to be followed inch by inch. Now you cannot say that we have to Supreme Court, we have to follow the new law. Ko follow nahi karenge. How is this possible? I'm sorry, we have to follow the 148 explanation. One ko pura karna hai, sir. At operative time, I hope my end is the right point. And we have to make a checklist ka ek point. Banana कि रिलाइड अपॉन इंफॉर्मेशन पूरा मिल रहा है नहीं मिल रहा है वो रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटजी वाला क्राइटेरिया का हिसाब से पूरा हो रहा है या नहीं हो रहा है फिर आगे बढ़ते हैं सर व्हेन आई विल फाइल दिस रिप्लाई इन नेक्स्ट 15 डेज सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेज कि द सेसी कैन फाइल द रिप्लाई व्हिच इज रिप्लाई अंडर 148 कैपिटल ए क्लॉज सी दैट रिप्लाई कैन बी फाइल्ड बाय द टैक्स पेयर इन परसुएंस टू द शेयरिंग ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन विद इन नेक्स्ट 15 डेज नाउ देयर इज अ वेरी सीरियस पॉइंट चिटले साहब द सीबीडीटी इन इट्स इंस्ट्रक्शन डेटेड 11th मई 2022 इन पैरा 6.1 एंड 6.2 आई एम सेइंग इन वेरी वेरी सम समरी सेंस दे हैव सेड दिस असेसमेंट ईयर इसमें चार पांच छह असेसमेंट ईयर आप नोट कर सकते हैं आप सब सर एवाई 13 14 14 15 15 16 16 17 17 18 एंड 18 19 आई बिलीव सिक्स इयर्स आर मेनली इन्वॉल्व और उसमें भी मेन है 13 14 14 15 15 16 now to my mind, Chitle sahab, all these years are time barred. There is lot of going debate going in our practical circles. Maybe some other scholar and other learned uh, viewer, uh, learned erudite speakers have a different view. I humbly respect that, but my humble view I will share, sir. Assessment year 1314 to my humble opinion as per section 149, 1B new law, Finance Act 2021, wala, 149, 1B. First proviso, it should be time barred, assessment year 1314 is time barred on 31st March 2021. Although it was time barring on 31st March 2020, but one year was extended by TOLA in the act. Are you getting my point, sir? So Chitleji assessment year 1314 got time barred on 31st March 2020-21. And assessment year 1415 also got time barred on 31st March 2021. I am saying, I am reading it on the basis of my humble reading on section 149, subsection 1, clause B, first proviso. That these two years are very clearly time barred on 31st March 2021 and in new law there should be no proceeding at all in my humble opinion on the same and CBDT instruction to my mind dated 11th May 2022 is ultra virus, is unconstitutional, is invalid. And I say this on the basis that CBDT brings again extension notification as I have said this is wrong. Extension notification have no role now. In new law when we read time limitation section uh, niche by section 149 1b first proviso it, it simply says I will read because it is a matter of very serious debate. 149 1b first proviso to be fair to the point. It says provided that no notice under this section 148 new section shall be issued at any time. First they say at any time in a case for the relevant AY beginning on or before 1st April 2021 means that no notice in the new law section in 148 will be issued for AY beginning on or before 1st April 2021 when if, 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 if a notice under section 148 could not have been issued at that time. Now use the, now the another word used is that time. Earlier it was any time that provided that no notice shall be issued at any time. Now they say, if a notice under section 148 could not have been issued at that time on account of being beyond the time limit specified under provision of clause B of section 149, as they stood immediately before the commencement of Finance Act 2021. Simply put, as I told Sudesh Taneja Rajasthan High Court, para 37, the meaning of this proviso is this, uh, sir, that if a notice has to be issued under the old law, Sorry, notice has to be issued under section 148 in the new law. At the time when that notice under the new law is issued, it will be checked. Agar wo assessment year 1st uh, April 2021 se pehle wala hai. So what will be the check in proviso? That whether that notice could have been issued under the asked while either to provision of 149 1B or not. Meaning thereby simply put, ki jis din 
at the time when the new law is enforced 148 whether the, there is time limit left under the old law in my opinion sir 13 14 14 got absolutely time barred on 31st march 2021 it is my humble and personal opinion and secondly in my opinion assessment year 15 16 also got time barred on 31st march 2022 by this way i as i am reading it and i am supported by one rajasthan high court decision i have told sudesh taneja para 37 another i am supported by this there is a cbdt instruction which you can all note cbdt instruction dated 10 december 2021 in this instruction sir cbdt instruction dated 10 december 2021 para 5 and para 5.1 hani ji the honorable uh, this cbdt in its own instruction dated 10 december 2021 has said how to read section 1491b and how to say how to see whether a particular year is time barred or not this instruction was issued you all my viewers will recall i have already also discussed in uh, direct tax committee platform ki the purpose of this instruction was this anirji ki that when new law is to be implemented in first time that it was a guidance to the entire in income tax officer in the country by cbdt ki how assessment year 15 16 should be reopened and how 18 19 should be reopened so in this instruction chitle sahab even cbdt itself opined indirectly and constructively ki sahab ay 15 16 will get time barred on 31 march 22 to sir ye wala instruction jo ab aaya hai aur aap us wale instruction ko dono ko ek compare karke dekhiye mere hisab se to koi reconciliation ho nahi raha hai any else sudesh taneja para 37 rajasthan high court cbdt instruction dated 10 december 2021 and third i want to say the old my various viewers which will be there will remember chitle sahab aapko bhi yaad aayega ki ek supreme court ka bada important faisla hota hai hum log usko bahut use karte hain acha i am just telling the citation of sudesh taneja please note the citation of sudesh taneja is 442 itr 289 442 itr 289 sudesh taneja citation and i am telling another point now on time limitation 1491b sir ki that is 13 14 14 15 15 16 15, are time barred there is a supreme court ruling chitle sahab in km sharma case supreme court of india km sharma 254 itr 772 you can note down it's a very important order 254 itr 772 what it says there is a jurisprudence anish ji ki that if a particular action gets time barred in the at a particular point of time when the new law comes or subsequent law comes and there is a extension of the time limitation it cannot re revive the old uh, old action which has already become time barred and which has already gone into the grave are you getting my point now already 13 14 14 15 15 16 got time barred at their respective junctions it cannot be reincarnated in the new law be just because it the time limit of 10 years is given in the extended time period are you getting my point that is what supreme court said in km sharma and ss gadgil there is a old ruling of supreme court ss gadgil you can note this order also ss gadgil and km sharma so my opinion is this uh, humble opinion uh, although it will be a now a fierce battle between the department and the assessees my view is this chitle sahab ki that supreme court decision in case of km sharma 254 itr 772 and this 1491b first proviso and cbdt instruction dated 10 december 2021 and rajasthan high court sudesh taneja para 37 all combined together in my opinion all this assessment year 13 14 14 15 15 16 are time barred they should not be touched aap bolenge mr goel then how should we reply now i am giving a template reply to you please take fast note of it if i am to frame a reply if i am to draft a reply how will i draft it for 13 14 14 15 and 15 16 i am telling in my humble suggestion one is free to adopt its own way this is my humble suggestion because i am invited here so it is my duty to share it with my viewers but it is no compulsion please don't take it in a in a otherwise manner i am just saying it in a humble sense somebody can have a better way of drafting than me so what i am pointing out chitle ji that if i am to reply a draft a reply for this 3 years on the notices which now uh, department is giving as per supreme court decision first point i will take sir is that this is time barred proceedings you can note down first first act first bullet point will be it is time barred i hope my point is very clear sir as per 1491b first proviso sudesh taneja's case cbdt instruction dated 10 december 2021 
and all those things which I have just told sir. First point will be Chitle sahab, it is time barred. Second point you can take is, you please note this is very important point sir. Second point is how to apply extended period of limitation. Abhi kya ho raha hai Anish bhai ki pura India mein sab logo ka ek hi sawal hai. Ki maan lete hai ye wala point hamara nahi chalta hai Mr. Goel ki that these are time barred. Phir kya hoga? What next? I am giving an alternate point. You must be knowing it. आपको सबको पता भी होगा अभी तो पहला point हुआ time बार दूसरा point आप लिखिए alternate point. It is extended period of limitation. Then three judicial condition are specified under 149 1B. What are three judicial condition? It's a special criteria of reopening under the new law in extended period. In new law, we all know there are two brackets of reopening compartments: one till three years and one beyond three years. Beyond three years, Chitle Sahab. The law says, I am reading, I want to emphasize on this in today's seminar because I have not discussed this before. I have to know this too. I have to study this too. I have to study this too. Now, what department is doing to my surprise, Chitle Ji, and direct tax committee should bring it to the notice of CBDT. How they are issuing the notices for extended period also, sir, they are simply saying that this is the information there. But I am saying that this criteria is not applicable at all for extended period, sir. What is the criteria? Correct criteria. Please note 149.1b says if three years but not more than ten years have elapsed from the end of relevant assessment year, unless unless means it is mandatory condition, condition precedent. Unless the AO has in his possession books, document, evidence. Please pardon me for my way of uh, telling you, but it has to be told like that. Books of account, document, or evidence. Now, sir, there is no information word here, sir. एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड में इंफॉर्मेशन वर्ड है कहा इन्होंने तो सब केस में एक्सप्लेनेशन वर्ड डिपार्टमेंट ने लगाना चालू करा अभी तो सर आई एम सॉरी इन थर्टीन फोर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन इफ दिस आर नॉट टाइम बार्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू सीबीडीटी देन द क्राइटेरिया विच इज स्पेशल क्राइटेरिया फॉर दिस एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड इज नंबर वन बुक्स डॉक्यूमेंट एविडेंस इन पोजेशन ऑफ एओ रिवीलिंग एस्केपमेंट ऑफ इनकम वट इज रिवीलिंग सर वाई इट इज नॉट सजेस्टिंग वहां तो लिखा इन्फॉर्मेशन सजेस्टिंग एस्केपमेंट ऑफ इनकम यहां लिखा बुक्स डॉक्यूमेंट एविडेंस रिवीलिंग एस्केपमेंट ऑफ इनकम व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन रिवीलिंग एंड सजेस्टिंग आर द सेम इज इंफॉर्मेशन इक्वल टू बुक्स डॉक्यूमेंट एविडेंस एंड सजेशन इक्वल टू रिवील आई एम सॉरी आई डोंट नो दैट इंग्लिश एंड वाई इट इज हैपनिंग की दे हैव जस्ट रेड्यूज इट टू फिफ्टी लैख का फिगर पे आ गया वो तो कहना पचास लाख से ऊपर कम सर वो एक कंडीशन है बाकी भी है उसमें सर बाकी कंडीशन क्या है पहला कंडीशन है बुक्स डॉक्यूमेंट एविडेंस इन पोजेशन ऑफ एओ डिपार्टमेंट रिवीलिंग दैट रिवीलिंग नाउ प्लीज यू नोट द वर्ड रिवीलिंग का मतलब कंक्लूसिव स्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ द फैक्ट ऑफ एस्केपमेंट ऑफ इनकम नॉट एनी डाउटफुल एस्केपमेंट सर रिवीलिंग नाउ इट शुड बी रिप्रेजेंटेड इन फॉर्म ऑफ समीर भाई एसेट वर्ड लिखा अगला लॉर्डर रिप्रेजेंटेड इन फॉर्म ऑफ एसेट मतलब अगर आप मुझे कोई पुराना साल का नोटिस देते हैं जो एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड का नोटिस है तो वे को ये प्रूव करना है डिपार्टमेंट को कि मेरे पास उस एस्केपमेंट के इक्वल आज कोई एसेट है मेरे पोजीशन में आज इस समय अभी और वो एसेट कौन सा वाला एसेट जो इसकी एक्सप्लेनेशन में डिफाइंड है नीचे अब चिटले साहब सोचिए जो इंफॉर्मेशन ये लोग अभी डिपार्टमेंट हमें दे रहा है तेरह चौदह चौदह पंद्रह पंद्रह सोलह में क्या वो इसके फिल्टर के हिसाब से 149 फोर्टी मन बी का कंडीशन के हिसाब से सही है सर है जी बिल्कुल नहीं होना चाहिए तो तो सर अभी तो गलत होता है वो तो बुक्स डॉक्यूमेंट एविडेंस कहा है रिवीलिंग कहा है रिप्रेजेंट इन फॉर्म ऑफ असेट कहा है वो तो सिर्फ पचास लाख से चल रहे हैं इज रॉन्ग देर देर सॉरी सीबीटी हेज रॉन्गली गिवन दिस इंस्ट्रक्शन आई एम आई एम डिसअपॉइंटेड वो तो उन्होंने एक कंडी, तीन कंडीशन का एक बना दिया है सर तीन का एक कैसे बन गया सर वो जादू कैसे हुआ वो तीन कंडीशन अलग अलग हैं बुक्स डॉक्यूमेंट एविडेंस इन पोजेशन ऑफ एओ रिवीलिंग एस्केपमेंट ऑफ इनकम देन रिप्रेजेंटेड इन फॉर्म ऑफ असेट देन मॉनिटरी थ्रेश ऑफ फिफ्टी लैक पर ईयर दीज आर थ्री सेपरेट कंडीशन नीड्स टू बी क्यूमुलेटिवली फुलफिल्ड तो मेरे रिप्लाई का पहला पॉइंट था टाइम बार्ड दूसरा रिप्लाई का पॉइंट हुआ कि यह एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड का लिमिटेशन का जुडिशनल क्राइटेरिया पूरा नहीं हुआ फाइनल कंटेंशन ये आप अपने तरीके से चेंज कर लें इसको एलेबोरेट कर लें फाइनल कंटेंशन इसका ये बनेगा नीश भाई कि साहब जो एस्केपमेंट वो बता रहे हैं इंफॉर्मेशन का बेस पे वो इंफॉर्मेशन रेलिवेंट है रैशनल है या वो जिसका आपसे कनेक्शन है या नहीं है तो थर्ड पॉइंट इज दैट यू विल हैव टू डेमोन्स्ट्रेट और वील हैव टू से दिस क्वालिटी ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन विच डिपार्टमेंट इज रिलाइंग अपॉन हैज नो एक्सेस एंड कनेक्शन टू लीड टू चार्ज ऑफ एस्केपमेंट ऑफ इनकम इन द न्यू लॉ अब चिटले साहब आई वॉज रीडिंग दिस वन बुक बाई चैंबर ऑफ टैक्स कंसल्टेंट का भी किताब आता है 
वो जो जर्नल आता है आप भी पढ़ते होंगे उसका उसका इस महीने का जर्नल बड़ा अच्छा आया आप जो भी चैम्बर ऑफ टैक्स कंसल्टेंट का रीअसेसमेंट का भी पूरा उन्होंने एक मई का भी दिया है एंड इट्स वर्थ रीडिंग ट्रीट टू रीड सौरपरकर साहब चेतन्या साहब एवरीबडी हैज एंड एवरी वेरियर्स लर्नेड एंड एडुडेट पीपल है मैं उसका एक समरी पॉइंट बताना चाहता हूं आप सबको आज का अभी सेमिनार में सर जो मुझे पहले नहीं बताया आप क्या चिटले साहब अब देखिए पुराने वाला वन को और नए वाले वन को पढ़िए पुराने वाले 147 फोर्टी सेवन में पहले पढ़ रहा हूं चिटले साहब पहला पुराना वाला 147 जो सेक्शन मेन है वो कैसे स्टार्ट होता था इफ द असेसिंग ऑफिसर हैज रीजन टू बिलीव दैट एनी इनकम चार्जेबल टू टैक्स हैज एस्केप्ड असेसमेंट दिस वाज द ओपनिंग लाइंस ऑफ द अर्लियर 147 सेक्शन प्रायर टू फर्स्ट अप्रैल नाउ वट इज द करंट वन फोर्टी सेवन एनजी काइंडली नोट इट सीरियस सीरियस रेडिकल चेंज हैज कम नाउ न्यू वन समीर भाई से इफ Any income chargeable to tax in the case of assessee has escaped assessment, meaning thereby there is a fundamental change in the position of law. That even now today, if 147 has to done, it cannot be done just merely on basis of suppositions or some kind of prima facie evidence. It has to be conclusive escapement of income. I'm sorry, this is how you have to read it. Earlier 147 was based on reason to believe as leading to escapement of income. Now the 147 language says if any income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment, what is the difference? So, Chitle Sir, are you getting my point? Now, in 147, in the new law, it has to be a firm, firm establishment of factum of escapement of income. And Rajesh Javeri and Raymond Woolen Mills are gone days. They cannot be applied in the new law. Sorry, department is still relying upon it. This is totally, totally, totally wrong. Raymond Woolen Mills and Rajesh Javeri cannot be applied in the new section 147 due to change in the position of the language of the law. I hope I have clarified my reply. I will repeat. First, you say that the proceedings are time barred as far as AY 13, 14, 14, 15, and 15, 16 is concerned. Second, we can say if extended period of limitation is applicable under Section 149, 1B, whether the three jurisdictional condition of books, document, evidence revealing escapement of income represented in form of asset escape lead, uh, more than 50 lakh rupees are fulfilled or not. Second point. Third, quality of information is be speaking for itself or not, sir. This will draft a comprehensive reply, Chitle Sir. And insist, insist, note it down. Please take a sharp point that every relied upon information you have to ask, the department has to give it to us. And personal hearing you should also ask. You ask for personal hearing, ki I want to come to explain to you my facts. Oral hearing and this uh, relied upon information. इतना क्लियर हो गया सर इट इज डाइजेस्टेड अब आप बोलेंगे मिस्टर गोयल इतना सब मेहनत करने के बाद अभी डिपार्टमेंट उसको ड्रॉप करेगा उसका ऑर्डर पास करेगा और उसको क्या करेगा ये तो मुझे नहीं पता है मैं इसको ऐसे तो नहीं बोल सकता हूं बट इन माय हम्बल ओपिनियन इट लुक्स नॉट वेरी मच वट यू से प्रोबेबल दैट दिस एक्शन वन का जो अभी पुराना लॉ से न्यू लॉ में आ रहा है वो ड्रॉप होगा हनीश भाई मे बी समबडी हु इज ए हु इज हैविंग लाइक कैपेबिलिटीज लाइक समीर लाडा जी और समबडी एल्स हु इज ए जगर नॉट एंड हैविंग हैंडसम पर्सनैलिटी लाइक हनीश भाई सो यू कैन गेट इट ड्रॉप्ड बट इट्स नॉट दैट इजी टू गेट इट ड्रॉप्ड आई होप माई पॉइंट इज वेल टेकन नॉट ऑफ तो वो क्वेश्चन मेरे से बहुत लोगों ने पूछा कि मिस्टर गोयल हाउ डू यू एक्सपेक्ट दिस डिपार्टमेंट विल ड्रॉप इट और नॉट द वे सिबिलिटी हैज गिवन इट्स इंस्ट्रक्शन आई फील इट वेरी सी maybe somebody could take it in a uh, in a different fashion ki that yes there is still room for dropping but i would humbly put my point of view that it's it is like this ki the department will definitely take this battle to the new 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 side or further side so <clears throat> yes we have to make make a better reply that is how i have already told you ki that you take all possible contentions and make it a comprehensive reply do not leave anything sir chitle ji whether it is time barred contention whether it is extended period of limitation contention whether it is quality of information wala contention and now i want to tell you four five important judgments which has just come on new 148 see already ye to bhi supreme court ne change kar diya par wo wala litigation to chal hi raha tha na jis pe chitle ji last time hum mile the ki jo inhone 148 capital a me fresh 148 e diya and already 
my lot of viewers would be aware although but it is my duty that some might not be aware there is a very important decision of the honorable delhi high court sir and this decision needs to be taken note of by everybody sir this is in the case of divya capital divya capital this is a honorable delhi high court decision dated 12th may 2022 in the case of divya capital now in this decision sir the case of divya capital the honorable delhi high court order sir 12 may 2022 12th may 2022 now in this case it's very interesting to read this order sir because it tells not only this order copy has been sent to cbd chairman also that quality of 148a which is happening is absolutely lacking if i read one paragraph of this order sir it's a detailed order 1 lakh crore escapement i don't know how much figure is this mere ko to padhne mein bhi nahi aaya wo bahut bada figure hai i don't know how much somebody was telling me it's like rupees 1 lakh 705 crore 80 lakh 88 lakh 4000 i don't know how to read this so it's a very matlab wo jaise hamara jaisa aadmi to bhi figure hi nahi pad pata hai usko to anyhow this is the quantum of escapement in this case the fine point of this decision starts from para 7 now what it says pehla pehla point first tag point uh, and it's note it's to be noted very sharply by my viewers uh, chitle ji new reassessment scheme was introduced by the finance act with the intent of reducing litigation and to promote ease of doing business i'm sorry <laughs> this this uh, objective and goal post is yet to be is is it looking very far sir people ask me ki mr goel where is this litigation reduced and where is the ease of doing business in all this so high court says honorable high court says delhi high court the court is of the view that under the amended provisions the term information in explanation 1 to section 148 cannot be lightly resorted to so as to reopen an assessment meaning thereby delhi high court makes a very clear point that just because there is an information in their system portal that cannot be ipso facto automatic based to reopen the case in the new regime this is what para 8 page 6 of delhi high court order says this information cannot be a ground to give unbridled power to the department whether it is information to suggest under the amended law high court says or reason to believe under the erstwhile law the benchmark of escapement of income chargeable to tax still remains the primary condition to be satisfied before invoking 147 so what it means so it means ki that escapement of income is still the ground norm then they say merely because the respondent department classifies a fact already on record as information it may vest with the power to issue a notice of reassessment but would certainly not vest with it power to reissue a, to issue a reassessment notice under 148 post and order under 148 ad what it says it's a very important line it says ranish bhai ki sirf is merely because of this reason ki aapne koi information ko computer mein dal diya hai uska matlab ye nahi hua ki aapko 148 a dena hi dena hai are you getting my point so para 8 of delhi high court says ki just because you have bring it bring brought new criteria of information that does not give unbridled power to the revenue and income escaping assessment remains the ground norm supposingly there are hundred of cases chitle ji abhi kisi ne bola ki department ne bogus purchase karke koi 148a diya aur usse humne bogus purchase to kuch nahi kara hua tha but usko sell kiya hua tha whether that action under 148a will sustain under the law answer is no sale and purchase are not home <laughs> interchangeable uh, classifications sir sorry and who will appreciate more than an accountant department alleges in 148a show cause and order that it's a bogus purchase but where is the fact of the matter is this it is a sale it's a classical case of non application of mind it's a classical case of sorry misuse and abuse of power it's a classical case where provisions are used for uh, extraneous purpose and purpose beyond the statute it's a classical case where the power given under the 148 has not been used for the purpose for which it has been given may you can say it any way but the fact remains ki agar aapne purchase nahi kiya hai aur allegation bogus purchase ka hai then that 148 a cannot sustain para 8 i hope it is clear delhi high court divya capital now i read para 10 now court says this court is of the view high court says that even if the reassessment was being done for verification in accordance with explanation 1 that 148a ka purpose verification hai 
Nothing prevented the AO from conducting an inquiry with respect to said information in, in accordance with 148 capital A clause A. In any event, it was more all the more necessary in the present case for AO to thoroughly scrutinize the contentions and submissions. Now, what is happening? Chitle sahab, this sara order jitna bhi pass hua hai. Jada tar aur high court ka remark hai, bhai sahab, bahut serious structure hai. Para 16 mein, they say it's a template order. ये ज्यादातर ऑर्डर टेम्पलेट ऑर्डर है कैन यू इमेजिन आई कैन रीड इट दिस आई एम नॉट यूजिंग दिस फ्रेज जस्टिस मनमोहन एज यूज्ड इन दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट ऑर्डर इट सेज सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ इश्यूज ऑफ शोकेंस नोटिस अंडर 148 ए एट ए स्टेज प्रायर टू इश्यू ऑफ ऑन इश्यूएंस ऑफ 148 नोटिस अंडर 148 हैज बीन लॉस्ट ऑन डिपार्टमेंट वो कह रहे हैं कि जो नया लॉ है उसके अंदर जो शोकेंस नोटिस का परंपरा है या मर्यादा है उसका डिपार्टमेंट के ऊपर कोई असर नहीं पड़ रहा है और मैं आपको अगला पैराग पढ़ के बताता हूं पैरा 16 जो इसमें है इसके हेडिंग का नीचे This court is of the opinion that significance of issuance of a show cause notice at a stage prior to issuance of a reassessment notice under section 148 has been lost on the respondents. This court takes judicial notice that in majority of reassessment notices post 1 April 2021, the orders which are passed under 148A capital clause D uses template and general reason to reject the defence of the assessee on merits. Consequently, this court is of the opinion that a progressive as well as futuristic scheme of reassessment whose intent is laudatory has in its implementation not only been rendered nugatory but has also had an unintended opposite result sir ye bataiye ye itna important judgment hai iske isse to ye pata chalta hai ki jo abhi pehle 148a ka jitna bhi order pass hua uska quality kya hai aur ab mujhe lag raha hai mera humble point hai sorry i can be wrong ki jo ab ye supreme court se parivartit 148a hoga d order वो ये ना हो जो सोल पैरा सोलह बोल रहा है आई एम हैविंग एन हम्बल एप्रीहेंशन एंड फियर विच मिस्टर मनमोहन जस्टिस मनमोहन हैज एलिवेटेड इन दिस दिव्या कैपिटल केस एनी हाउस यू कैन ऑल टेक नोट ऑफ दिस दिल्विया कैपिटल केस एंड इन दिस ऑर्डर ऑनरेबल हाईकोर्ट हैज गिवन ए वेरी अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इन पैराग्राफ नंबर यू कैन नोट दिस ऑल्सो विच वेरी नोटेड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पैराग्राफ इलेवन में क्या लिखा है जी पैरा इलेवन में दिस ए Every relied upon information has to be gently and genuinely shared with the SSC as a matter of principle of natural justice. Para 11. And if it is not shared, then entire 148A D will become wrong. So Chitle Ji, Divya Capital is a good judgment. It shows the path. And at least if department has to healthily implement it, rather I thought that the jo unka CBD ka instruction hai, usko unko change karna chahiye. They should include this Divya Capital case in that instruction. then it will become a healthy balanced and objective exercise now after all this sir i have already told rajasthan high court development constitutional validity wala point risk management strategy delhi high court i have discussed sir just a minute now hmm. there are some there are various other high courts because it's a direct tax committee program uh, calcutta high court recently uh, in one of the cases by division bench i will tell this decision also by to my viewers my viewers can note it sir this is a case of calcutta high court in case of rn fashion versus union of india calcutta high court rn fashion versus union of india date, order dated 20th may 2022 rn fashion versus union of india 20th may 2022 calcutta high court division bench justice ts sivangnam who is also a very tax tax juggernaut he says in this order chitle saab department ke officer ko unhone bola ki isme likha hai unhone main isme se padh ke bol raha hu unhone bola ki in officer saab ko itna jaldi tha tearing hari mein the ki unko kisi tarike se 148a d ka order assc ka khilaf pass karna hi tha और इसके लिए उनको दंड क्या दिया गया वो लिखिए उन्होंने कहा कि मैं कॉस्ट इसलिए लगा रहा हूं जज साहब ने कि टू एज ए डेटरेंट टू दिस ऑफिसर्स कि वो आर पासिंग दिस ऑर्डर्स लाइक ए एम्प्टी रिचुअल एंड दिस आर एन फैशन केस आल्सो टेक्स कॉग्निजेंस ऑफ दिल्ली हाईकोर्ट ट्वेल्थ मई दिव्या कैपिटल डिसीजन दिस डिसीजन ऑफ कैलकटा हाईकोर्ट इन आर एन फैशन इज टेकिंग कॉग्निजेंस ऑफ ट्वेल्थ मई डिसीजन ऑफ दिल्ली हाईकोर्ट इन दिव्या कैपिटल सो पर्सनल कॉस्ट हैज बीन इंपोज पर्सनल कॉस्ट ऑफ फिफ्टीन ऑन द एओ to pass an order invalid order 148a d order in tearing hari so calcutta high court i have told sir rn fashion case and they have said ki that if an ssc files reply if ssc wants to have some more time even under the new law sir if you go to section 1491 and third proviso what it says ki if ssc asks more time under 148a inquiry that time will be added in the time limitation 
So there should not be any hurry on part of department to pass the order, undue orders, hasty orders. So Calcutta High Court, I have told this Delhi High Court, in my opinion, there is one more development from Gujarat High Court. Justice Padiwala, before being elevated from Gujarat to High Court to Supreme Court now, is a, he has been a, again a very famous tax judge. And he has written a lot of judgments on GST also, sir. Justice J.B. Padiwala in Gujarat High Court has written two beautiful orders on 148 capital A clause D. You can note the name, Mahananda Enterprise and Vimal Shrevala. There are two Gujarat High Court orders, sir, on 148 capital A, New Wala 148 A, Gujarat High Court. That is Mahananda Enterprise Private Limited versus ITO, order dated 2nd May 2022. And second is Just a minute, I am telling second one. One is Mahananda Enterprises and another is there more. There. My brother is telling me, Shrenik Vimalwala. Shrenik Vimalwala, Sandeep ji is telling me. This is second decision, Shrenik, Shrenik Vimalwala. And in this decision, also Gujarat High Court has also said, uh, Chitle sahab, ki that 148A capital A purpose is to give meaningful opportunity to the taxpayer to explain its point of view, ki that why 148 should not be used in his case. And it cannot be made an empty ritual and idle formality. That is what Gujarat High Court has also said. Delhi High Court, Calcutta High Court, Gujarat High Court and various other High Courts also, sir. Madras High Court, Odisha High Court. I have all this decision High Court wise also with me. So they have said and they have commented, sir, judges, honorable lordships of the High Court, again on the very bad and poor quality of these orders, sir. In many cases, they have not even given that seven days minimum time period clear days notice. Seven days ka clear notice hi nahi hai. Ab bataiye sahab, aisa inko, sorry to say like this, ki department ko kya itna problem hota hai ki saath din ka notice dene mein SSE ko sir. Jab ki kanun mein likha hua hai ki wo jo saath din milenge, wo 149 ka limitation mein add ho jayega. To kya problem hai saath din ki jaga teen din diye ja rahe hai. और उसके बाद एसएससी का रिप्लाई फाइल होता है उसको बिना कंसीडर करे ऑर्डर आ जाता है वो कहते हैं हमें रिप्लाई दिखाई नहीं सिस्टम पे हाउ इज दिस पॉसिबल आई आई एम आई एम एट अ लॉस व्हेन आई सी द कोर्ट रूलिंग्स हाई कोर्ट रूलिंग सर ऑनरेबल हाई कोर्ट रूलिंग्स की दैट सेइंग दैट कि दिस ऑर्डर्स आर पास अंडर 148 डी इवन डू नॉट कंसीडर दैट रिप्लाई फाइल ऑन द पोर्टल बाय द टैक्स पेयर आई एम आई एम सॉरी आई एम एट अ लॉस हाउ इज दिस आई एम इट इज अनफैथमेबल इनएक्सप्लिकेबल टू मी सो टू से to complete this chain of discussion, sir, I believe 148 capital A is a very serious process. There are two brackets, one normal period, three years, and one special period, extended period, more than three years. In extended period, department has to fulfill the special criteria. In normal period, they have to fulfill the general criteria of information suggesting escapement of income. But information is not gospel truth, not synchron sect. It can be objected, it can be repudiated, it can be contested. It can be proven to be erroneous, factually incorrect, and wrong. And then assessing officer is under a duty to drop that proceeding if it is shown to be wrong, non-existing, unfounded, baseless. So, in my opinion, this is how it, this whole exercise has to be taken place. And 149 subsection 1 clause B first proviso has to be strictly implemented. Time limitation. And extended period 3 conditions have to be strictly seen. Many people have asked me ki, what is this criteria of asset. I have told only when in the extended period there is an undisclosed asset in the position of assessee, unrecorded asset, then only three, beyond three years you can go. That asset means unrecorded, undisclosed, unaccounted asset, not recorded asset. This is also to my mind very clear. So, now there are three high court decisions. Samir Bhai, and I am telling you, worth noting, we all have seen some tough time for chartered accountants. And we are all worried for our professional brothers and colleagues. But I am telling you the how High Court Chitle Saab has come down. Chitle Saab, I don't know whether he's there or not. But in last one week or two weeks, Sanish Bhai, I am telling you now I am going to tell three landmark epochal path-breaking order from three different High Courts on income tax and malab, eye-opener. One is the decision of Rajasthan High Court of last day. A treat to read, I have sent you to Chitle Sahib, you can send your viewers to your committee, Rajinder Kumar versus ACIT. 
दिस इज द डिसीजन ऑफ ऑनरेबल राजस्थान हाईकोर्ट राजेंद्र कुमार वर्सिज एसीआईटी ऑर्डर डेटेड ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव मई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू कल का ऑर्डर है राजस्थान हाईकोर्ट राजेंद्र कुमार वर्सिज एसीआईटी एंड फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज कॉस्ट हैज बीन इम्पोज इट वॉज ए केस आई से समेरी सर इन दिस केस एस एस सी फाइल्ड एन अपील अगेंस्ट एन असेसमेंट टू द सी आई टी अपील सम हाउ दैट अपील कुड नॉट बी डिसाइडेड और टेकन अप फॉर हियरिंग फॉर मोर देन वन एंड हाफ ईयर इन द मेन वाइल डिपार्टमेंट टू रिकवर इन इज एनजाइटी टू रिकवर द डिमांड एडजस्टेड हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ इट डिमांड अगेंस्ट द पेंडिंग रिफंड एंड डिड नॉट रिमेन कन्फाइन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट नॉम ऑफ ऑफिस मेमोरेंडम सो नाउ इन दिस बैकग्राउंड राजस्थान हाईकोर्ट हैज सेड एंड पास स्ट्रिक्चर्स जस्टिस समीर जैन सेज कि आई एम वी आर डेलीबरेट वी आर कॉन्सियसली पासिंग स्ट्रिक्चर्स ऑन द इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट बिकॉज दियर एक्शन आर वायोलेटिव ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल आर्टिकल्स आर्टिकल फोर्टीन आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन एंड आर्टिकल टू सिक्सटी फाइव यू कैन नोट डाउन आर्टिकल फोर्टीन आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन एंड आर्टिकल टू सिक्सटी फाइव and they say that it is high time that department and cbdt raises the eyebrow ki that at one hand they do not dispose the appeals for number of years samir bhai and on the other hand they want to go behind recovery 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 is it right they say it is an act in terrorism i am not using this phrase my lord have said it is an act in terrorism just samir jain speaking for rajasthan high court last day sending the order to revenue secretary and cbdt chairman for taking corrective action and sensitizing the income tax department for not using their power just for sake of doing it there should not be any kind of misuse of power when 20% norm is there and assessee keh raha hai ki sahab ab mera 20% le lijiye to bhi unko pura kyu chahiye aur iske liye accountability kahan hai ek to aap mera appeal decide nahi kar rahe hain ye high court bol raha hai aur ek taraf recovery kare ja rahe hain पैसा वापस करना पड़ेगा और राजस्थान स्टेट लीगल सर्विसेज अथॉरिटी को हाई कोर्ट ने डायरेक्शन दे दी है ऑर्डर के अंदर कि इस राजस्थान स्टेट में जितनी भी अपील पेंडिंग है उनका स्टेटिस्टिक्स हाई कोर्ट के सामने लाया जाए और बताया जाए कि क्या प्लान है गवर्नमेंट का उसको डिस्पोज करने का इनकम टैक्स की फर्स्ट अपील आई से इट्स एन इम्पोकल ऑर्डर सर यह हमारा आवाज उन्होंने सुन लिया दुखी आवाज सर राजेंद्र कुमार वर्सिज एसीआईटी ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ मई टू राजस्थान हाईकोर्ट स्पीकिंग थ्रू जस्टिस समीर जैन एंड दे हैव मैं आपके सामने और पढ़ूंगा आप कहेंगे उसमें ऐसे ऐसे वर्ड चिटले साहब उन्होंने जस्टिस जैन ने लिखे हैं जस्टिस जैन हिमसेल्फ हैज बीन एन काउंसिल इन टैक्स लॉ बिफोर बींग जज इन द ऑनरेबल हाई कोर्ट ही हैज सीन द टैक्स लॉ वेरी क्लोजली एज आई नो सो ओनली वन हुज सीन दिस हेरेसमेंट फ्रॉम क्लोजली कैन 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 अप्रिशिएट द सेंटिमेंट आई एम टेलिंग यू हीज यूज ए फ्रेज कि साहब एब्सोल्यूट पावर करप्ट एब्सोल्यूटली ही हेज यूज इन द जजमेंट He has used in the judgment that I am passing strictures and I am bound to that the Department of uh, Income Tax should be sensitized that how they use their recovery provisions powers. They have uh, 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 what? Did you say interpretation six? Okay, na, wo jisme hamar ko usbo bolte hain, ham to pura paisa lenge ya 20 percent to lenge lenge. Unhone uske liye bhi bol diya ki ab 20 percent nahi le sakte hain. Agar assessi ka koi wo nahi hai, kasoor nahi hai, blame nahi hai ki uska appeal decide nahi ho raha hai. First appeal. आप समझ रहे हैं सर तो दिस इज ए वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑर्डर कॉस्ट भी लगाया सर फिर दूसरा ऑर्डर मैं बताना चाहता हूं जहां रेवेन्यू सेक्रेटरी तरुण बजाज साहब का एफिडेविट अलाहाबाद हाईकोर्ट ने मंगवाया इट वाज ए केस यू कैन नोट डाउन इट्स आल्सो ए वेरी रिसेंट ऑर्डर ऑफ सेवनटीन मई टू हरीश भाटी द नेम ऑफ द ऑर्डर इज सर हरीश चंद्र भाटी वर्सिज पीसीआईटी नोएडा ऑर्डर डेटेड नाइनटीन मई टू ये भी एक इपोकल ऑर्डर है चिटले साहब हरीश चंद्र भाटी वर्सेस पीसीआईटी नोएडा 19th मई 2022 अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट जस्टिस एसपी केशरवानी अब इस केस में जस्टिस केशरवानी को इतना उनको दुख हुआ उन्होंने क्या देखा सर कि एक केस में असेसमेंट फेसलेस असेसमेंट होता है हाई पीज असेसमेंट होता है और उसमें नेचुरल जस्टिस के वायोलेशन हो जाते हैं असेसी का रिप्लाई कंसिडर नहीं होता है ब्ला 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 तो उन्होंने कहा कि डिपार्टमेंट अकाउंटेबिलिटी फिक्स करने के लिए हाई पिच असेसमेंट में क्या कर रहा है और हम सब हाई पिच असेसमेंट को बहुत देख चुके हैं कितना दुख होता कितना दिक्कत होता है उसका स्टे का और सबका ये जजमेंट हरीश चंद्र भाटी का एक अपने आप में लैंडमार्क ऑर्डर है हाई पिच असेसमेंट को टैकल करने के लिए अब जज साहब ने क्या किया ये इसको असेसी ने क्या हुआ मेरे को लगा असेसी ने अभी इसको जैसे जजमेंट बताता है असेसी एक बार पटिशन फाइल कर दिया बट जज साहब ने जब उसको सीरियसली अभी लिया कि साहब ये तो अभी गवर्नमेंट का अभी फेसलेस स्कीम में बड़ा फॉल्ट है तो उन्होंने तरुण बजाज साहब का रेवेन्यू सेक्रेटरी का हलफनामा मंगवाया एफिडेविट कि आप हमें समझाइए कि आपका इस फेसलेस स्कीम में इतना सारा सब कुछ कैसे हो रहा है गलत 
और वो सब आप इस ऑर्डर में देखेंगे चिटले साहब जस्टिस केशर मानी अलाहाबाद हाईकोर्ट कंपेल्ड इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस रेवेन्यू सेक्रेटरी टू इश्यू ए न्यू सर्कुलर कि साहब आपका जो भी हाईपीज असेसमेंट कमेटी है पूरे इंडिया में स्टेट में वो प्रॉपरली काम कर रहा है नहीं कर रहा है आप इंश्योर करिए वो सब काम कर रहा है नहीं कर रहा है और उसका ग्रीवियंस का क्या हो रहा है ऐसे और उस एओ के ऊपर क्या कार्रवाई हो रहा है जिसने हाईपीज असेसमेंट किया है ये हरिश्चंद भाटी में लिख दिया उन्होंने सर और रेवेन्यू सेक्रेटरी साहब का एफिडेविट भी उसमें पूरा छाप दिया है और साथ में जो नया सीबीडीटी का सर्कुलर है सोचिए कितना इंटरेस्टिंग है चिटले जी इस जजमेंट की वजह से एक नया सर्कुलर बोर्ड ने बनाया हाईपीज असेसमेंट को टैकल करने के लिए जो हाईकोर्ट को दिया वो अभी पब्लिक डोमेन में वैसे नहीं आया है पर इस हाईकोर्ट के जजमेंट में रिप्रोड्यूस है वो और पूरा एक मैंडा मस का मेरे मेरे अपने हम्बल एक्सपीरियंस में मैंने पहली बार हाईकोर्ट को देखा है कि मैंडा मस का रिट में पूरा एक जनरल डायरेक्शन दिया है बड़ा लेंथ पे इनकम टैक्स मैटर में कि हाईपीज असेसमेंट में अकाउंटेबिलिटी फिक्स की जाए और एक पैराग्राफ में सर उन्होंने जज साहब ने अपना मन का बहुत अच्छा बात लिखा कि साहब टैक्स पेयर को आप रिस्पेक्ट से डिग्निटी से ट्रीट करिए दे आर ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमी दे नीड टू बी ट्रीटेड विद डिग्निटी नॉट विद इल डिग्निटी दैट इज जस्टिस एस पी केशरवानी अलाहाबाद हाईकोर्ट स्पीकिंग इन केस ऑफ हरीश चंद्र भाटी वर्सिज पीसीआईटी ए लैंडमार्क ऑर्डर सर फिर मेरे सामने जो डिसीजन अभी अभी जो और ये जो और हाईकोर्ट के कुछ डिसीजन आए सर जहां पर उन्होंने अभी जैसे अलाहाबाद हाईकोर्ट ने भी और भी हाईकोर्ट ने जहां पर उन्होंने ये बात कही है कि डिपार्टमेंट जो भी इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट है या टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट है सर वो अपनी पावर को मिसयूज नहीं कर सकता है और अभी आप देखिए हनीश भाई ये कलकट हाईकोर्ट का मैं बता चुका हूं कॉस्ट इंपोज करिए जस्टिस सिमंगनम ने तो इन सब को कंबाइन कर दीजिए एज फार एज हाईकोर्ट आर कंसर्न डिपार्टमेंट इज एट दज इज टेकन डिपार्टमेंट का जो भी उनका फॉल्ट लाइन है हाईकोर्ट ने ऑनरेबल हाईकोर्ट ने पूरा एक्सपोज कर दिया है कि हाउ दे आर कंडक्टिंग दीज वन फोर्टी एट प्रोसीडिंग्स हाउ दे आर टेकिंग न्यू रीअसेसमेंट हाउ दे आर इश्यूंग सो कॉज नोटिस हाउ दे आर पासिंग टेम्पलेट ऑर्डर हाउ दे आर नॉट कंसिडरिंग द रिप्लाइज ऑफ द सेसी हाउ दे आर ऑब्ड्यूरेट एंड ऑब्सक्रेंटिस इन दियर अप्रोच हाउ दे आर रिजिड एंड नॉट इनफ्लेक्सीबल एंड एडमेंट इन दियर एटीट्यूड एंड हाउ दे आर नॉट गिविंग प्रॉपर प्रॉपर ट्रीटमेंट टू द टेक्स पेयर आई वॉज रीड आई वॉज ऑल्सो वॉन्डरिंग सर कि my my good friends ask me ki mr goel ki whether this 148 capital a in the new law or the after supreme court decision whether it will increase litigation or whether it will decrease litigation the answer is very simple and plain sir and i believe it has become more limpid after our discussion that where direction we are heading towards so i need not elaborate it more now we can take the queries which are there sir and th thankful to all my viewers who are there in this uh, webcast organized by direct tax committee of institute of chartered accountants of india my good friend chitle saab my elder brother uh, samir bhai hanish ji and every other dignitary and my good friend who is there i feel blessed sir thank you all of you well uh, thank you kapil sir before we take today's uh, last session question and answer we have very uh, we have with us the dynamic central council member csv chitre sir who is also the chairman of directors committee uh, we are happy for his presence in uh, today in our panel discussion sir welcome again on uh, behalf of all the participants and uh, all the panel i request you uh, please uh, kindly give your views on this uh, section 148 before we take the uh, question answer session over to chitre sir uh, thank you samir and i think uh, views on section 148 are already uh, presented in the seminar or the presentation by kapil bhai so i will not uh, uh, go into it i will just endorse that whatever uh, has been dilated by uh, kapil bhai is a treat for the purpose of tax practitioners and i am sure uh, that in this way if the department uh, keeps on acting uh, i think stakeholders uh, will have to take serious note of it and maybe prime minister's office also can be appraised of it because uh, recent episode uh, that happened in case of gst at uh, gaziabad also underlines uh, such high handed attitude and i believe that in that high handed attitude co moto uh, action has been taken by uh, the honorable cbc in a similar manner uh, in case of uh, income tax i think we have to or the department has to trade along with the law along with the guided principles of law if it does not happen 
uh, courts are liberally taking uh, the side of ACC and not because uh, they have any affinity for the ACC, but it is because of lack of following the principles of uh, law like natural justice and other things uh, which are enunciated by courts themselves. So whether it is embedded in law or not, it is always understood that these principles have to be followed. Uh, <clears throat> coming on behalf of uh, Direct Taxation Committee, as you are aware, that only yesterday we have published compilation on the statement of uh, donations received to be furnished by uh, charitable institutions at the hands of Honorable President C.A. Devashish Mitra at Kolkata. We are also in the process of revising uh, guidance note on tax audit. Maybe a draft would be ready by the time of this month or maybe 1st or 2nd of June and that draft will be uh, released. Those who are interested can claim that draft from Direct Tax Committee and if any suggestions are uh, to be made for improvement of this guidance note, these are welcome. Another two publications of Direct Taxation Committee that is Taxation of Charitable Institutions and Audit of Charitable Institutions. 11, 12, 13, these are also under making. And now, uh, because of this uh, particular deliberations, I think one compilation of decisions under section 148, 148A, that also uh, maybe we will take up and with some summary if we publish, maybe at one go all these decisions would be available and whenever the issue comes up of responding to these notices, I think rather than uh, going here and there, maybe uh, such important 10-15 uh, judgments would be at the disposal of the uh, professionals. So uh, to this end also, maybe separately we will talk to Kapi and uh, ask his views on which decisions we should include. And then accordingly, maybe we can prepare some summary also include these decisions in full form and make them available for the professionals. And uh, I'm sure that uh, I was not able to join from the beginning because as uh, I'm at Guwahati for some another program for direct access uh, uh, this uh, course. But then maybe this pro uh, lectures are recorded and uh, these are also uploaded on the website of DTC. So those who are not able to join today, uh, maybe uh, at a later date they would be able to uh, listen this lecture at the uh, convenient time and they would be able to decipher uh, the interpretation of this particular section and whenever occasion arises, how to defend the case, of course, in a rightful manner. So I thank Kapil Bhai for uh, uh, being with us and I'm sure that uh, your patronage always uh, is showered on our direct taxation committee and the professionals in general. So that will continue in years to come. Uh, you are referred to uh, certain uh, judges and their strictures and that and they were earlier tax councils. Mm. Uh, we also would like to see sometime Kapil Goyal is doing <laughs> <a general> <laughs> So but kind of you, I feel blessed sir. Uh, the appropriate judgments in appropriate may, language. May, may, may Ma Saraswati come in your, uh, come, uh, come there and uh, I, 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 I would be definitely feeling blessed sir if it happens like that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so with that uh, Samir, let us move on to the uh, question and answers. If there are any questions on chat box, maybe uh, you can, you and Pankaj Soni can take them up. Soni Zab, can you read it for me? Uh, yes, actually, I, I have uh, the list of questions what the audience saying. I will read one by one for your no, uh, please, please. There are a lot of questions, so we will take them as many as possible. No, you can right. avoid repetitive questions. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, I will, yeah. I will have one, No, 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 no rationing from my side. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first question from Mr. Uh, Ashok uh, Katonka, sir. What will be the status of case where order is passed by AO under section 143 into 3 and uh, High Court quash the notice and, and or oblige High Court pass an order and advise the AO to follow the Supreme Court order? See, if I am rightly understanding what Mr. Ashok ji is saying, there can be four contingencies, sir. You can note down. One is that contingency and it will cover everything. This is one case where ASSE has not gone into writ petition, sir. And his case was, uh, 148 was issued from 1st April to 30th June 2021. Now in this case, in my humble opinion, since the Supreme Court decision in his pan India base, and Supreme Court says this, is, this uh, command is to be followed in the across India, in first category, I am saying that uh, Chitale sahab, the notice was issued from 1st April to 30th June and the note, SSE did not went to writ petition and the proceedings are still pending. 
इन दैट इन माई ओपिनियन दैट नोटिस विल नाउ हैव टू बी चेंज टू द न्यू लॉ मतलब दिस सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिसीजन शुड कवर इट ऑल्सो देर इज सम डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन ऑन दिस बट माई ओपिनियन इज दिस इवन दैट एस एस सी हु हैज नॉट वेंट टू द रिट पिटिशन एंड हिज केस इज पेंडिंग टूडे अनिश जी विच इज इश्यूड नोटिस अंडर वन फर्स्ट अप्रैल टू थर्टी एथ जून देन दैट विल ऑल्सो टू बी म्यूटेटेड एज पर द प्रोसीजर एंड गाइडलाइन ऑफ पैरा टेन ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑर्ड सेकेंड केस इज दिस की सर हु हैज गॉन इन टू द रिट एंड देयर द हाई कोर्ट हैज क्वेश्ड इट और द केस इज पेंडिंग now that is very clear supreme court has made it clear ki in that is very absolutely clear ki in that case in which the high court has already quashed it or the proceeding are pending before high court then this judgment will squarely cover to that second case also that is made very clear the doubt was doubt is there in first category second category there is no doubt now in third category if there is a case sir where notice was issued from 1st april to 30th june and writ petition was not filed an assessing officer has already made the assessment before 31st march 2022 this is third case i repeat first case aapko clear ho raha hai first case tha jahan par assessee ne writ nahi file kiya tha aur uska case aaj bhi pending hai 1 april ka baad ka notice ka in my opinion that will get transferred to the new law in second case i told ki assessee has filed the writ petition either the high court has quashed it or not quashed it that will also get converted to the new law third case is a difficult case peculiar case where the notice was issued from 1st april to 30th june and uh, assessee never filed writ petition and department to its own peril has already completed the assessment on the basis of invalid notice to my mind this can never be converted because cause of action has been killed usme assessee ko kya karna hoga chitle sahab appeal mein jana hoga us assessment order ke khilaf aur cat appeal ko usko quash karna hoga baat khatam matlab baat khalas वो चेंज नहीं होगा जहां असेसमेंट ऑलरेडी ऑर्डर कर दिया है उन्हें ओल्ड लॉ के नोटिस फर्स्ट अप्रैल से तीस जून वाला दिस इज ए थर्ड कैटेगरी समीर भाई फोर्थ कैटेगरी भी है फोर्थ कैटेगरी में ये आया कि जहां नोटिस फर्स्ट अप्रैल से थर्टी जून में इश्यू हुआ आपने आपने कोई ना तो रिट फाइल किया और असेसिंग ऑफिसर ने असेसमेंट भी कंप्लीट नहीं किया और वो किस पेंडिंग में पहले ले चुका हूं तो इन दिस थ्री कैटेगरीज आई बिलीव एवरीथिंग एज कम सर एक केस कैटेगरी थोड़ा ट्रबल सम है जो अभी एक कुछ जगह हाई कोर्ट्स में केसेस चल रहे हैं कि जहां नोटिस 31 मार्च को इश्यू हुआ सो कॉल प्रिपेयर हुआ और उसको 1 अप्रैल के बाद डिपार्टमेंट ने डिस्पैच किया वहां यह वाला डजमेंट लगेगा नहीं लगेगा आशीष अग्रवाल का दिस इज मिलियन डॉलर क्वेश्चन दिस इज वेरी ट्रिकी आई रिपीट की एक नोटिस चिटले साहब डिपार्टमेंट ने इकतीस मार्च दो को डिजिटल सिग्नेचर करके डिन नंबर लगाकर साइन कर दिया बट उसको एक अप्रैल को या एक अप्रैल के बाद मेल किया अब वेदर इट विल कम अंडर पैरा टेन ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट और नॉट इन माई ओपिनियन नो बिकॉज दिस नोटिस इज डेटेड थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च तो आई बिलीव आई हैव कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली कवर्ड दिस फोर कैटेगरी नेक्स्ट वॉट इज द फेट ऑफ नोटिस इश्यूड आफ्टर थर्टी फर्स्ट थ्री टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन आई थिंक यू हैव कवर इन दिस एंसर सर नेक्स्ट For AY 2018-19, client has received order under uh, section 148 and dated 6/4 2022. Sir, 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 थोड़ा सा डिफिकल्ट है समीर भाई दिस इज ऑल्सो आई आई गेट द क्यूरी लाइक दिस दिस कि दैट असेसमेंट इज 13 18 एंड द 148 इन नोटिस मेड माइट बी प्रोसीडिंग शुड हैव बीन स्टार्टेड इन मार्च एज एज इट लुक्स लाइक फ्रॉम क्यूरी एंड द ऑर्डर हैज बीन पास इन अप्रैल तो दे से चिटले साहब द क्यूरी वॉन्ट टू से आवर लनेट कलीग कि साहब ये तीन साल के बाद ऑर्डर पास हुआ है तो इट विल कम इन एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड एंड इट इज लेस देन फिफ्टी लैक्स सो इट शुड गो This is precisely his query, but I have a point. I have already told there is a section one forty nine, one third proviso. It says that ki whatever time is there, seven days time plus extended time, it will be added in three years, sir. Are you getting my point, Samir Bai? So it is like this: ki thirty first March plus seven days. Are you getting my submission? So that is due to section one forty nine, subsection one third proviso. So to my mind, it is incorrect. Correctly, as far as one forty nine one is concerned, third proviso. हा दैट थिंग हैज टू बी सीन की दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन क्राइटेरिया इज प्रॉपरली फुलफिल्ड और नॉट दैट एस्केपमेंट क्राइटेरिया दिव्या कैपिटल डिसीजन ऑल दो थिंग्स नो ओनली इन दिस केस इवन इफ असेस्ट इनकम इज लेस देन फिफ्टी लैक्स स्टिल 
it is apprehension at the time of opening uh, reopening the assessment or their judgment that it was more than 50 lakhs later on assessment may be of less than 50 lakhs no no my point yes. is something different sir no, i understand has... you talked on one point i am talking on the other point of quantum hmm. hey, but are you saying that ki nahi nahi main samjha nahi chitle sahab aap kya kehna ja rahe hain nahi main keh raha chahu ki uska ye kehna hai ki mera 50 lakhs se kam assess hua hai तो वो पॉइंट 50 लाख के पॉइंट पे वो निकल सकता है क्या तो 50 लाख का पॉइंट वाज फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ री ओपनिंग एंड नॉट फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ री असेसमेंट अल्टीमेटली री असेसमेंट में रिजल्ट इनटू अ लोअर अमाउंट बट एट द टाइम व्हेन इट इज री ओपन दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी शार्प थिंग व्हिच यू हैव टोल्ड आई एम सॉरी आई एम नॉट एबल टू डाइजेस्ट एट दिस सॉरी यू वांट टू से कि मिस्टर गोयल कि एट द एजम्पशन ऑफ ज्यूडिशियन इफ लेट अस से देयर इज एन एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड आफ्टर 3 इयर्स एंड एट द स्टेज पॉइंट दे दे बिलीव दैट इट इज मोर देन 50 लाख Yes. And you say, okay, Mr. Goel, when he will make final assessment, let us say in 147, read with 1433, that can go below 50 lakh. I am doubtful. No, it will kill his judiciary. It will sublato fundamento carry it. Opus will apply because it will it will it it will it will have impact on his foundation of judicial assumption. Ah, uh, see, otherwise what will happen, Chitle Sir? You can't say that this section 149, 1B condition of 13 condition are not only for initiation of proceedings. in my opinion they have to be there present in the case till the end till the end it goes to mansarovar kalash or ganga, ganga sagar it cannot be aborted it should not be aborted otherwise it will frustrate the purpose of the law it will give something to the ao which legislature does not want to give him i am very glad that you approach this point this is a very interesting point i will further explore it and one okay. another thing that in earlier era we said that okay whenever you are reopening you are making addition at least some addition has to be based on the point on which it is reopened maybe other additions you can make see again you are today sir you are, you are this, is, this is again a second interesting point you see in the earlier 147 section now it's a very interesting thing i am glad you have raised it in the earlier law there was a language and also any other income which comes to his notice subsequently during the course of proceeding this additional language is not there in the new 147 main section there is explanation 3 but in my humble opinion if the basis let us say there is one information coming to the ao on the basis of which he gave me 148 ad order and on the basis of which 148 is started now ultimately anish bhai let us say if that information is found to be non existing baseless or no escapement is found on that information which is foundational information to my mind that jet airways and all other decisions which have come in the earlier 148 will hold good in the new law also meaning thereby if the basis of the proceeding that is the information underlying information is not found to yield escapement of income then proceeding will go should be there away in my respectful submission the next uh... what will be the timeline for ay 2013 14 notices whether the extension of dates will having effect of completing the time limit under section 149 one provision sir i have already told assessment date 13 14 14 15 getting time barred on 31st march 2021 15 16 getting time barred on 31st march 2022 and assessment year 16 17 17 18 and 18 19 comes under extended period according to me samir bhai 149 1 b three conditions have to be fulfilled okay and uh, in one case addition of rupees 130.69 crores was made in the case of asian pets for spending as per company on trip expenses of dealers on But on which expenses of on which expenses trip 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 trip, trip. okay okay trip i i got it yes okay 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 but as per ao on uh, free buys or on pleasure trip the case of dealer for uh, assistant uh, assessment year 2016 17 has been reopened by dividing the total number disallowed in asian paint with the number of dealers uh, that is 130.69 divided by the number of dealers that comes to 3.31 lakhs under section 148 mm-hmm. now under section 148 b has been yeah. issued is it correct sir i believe there is some kind of uh, thing which has gone overboard extrapolation too much extrapolation see I don't know how it is. In, see, firstly, the charge of the department allegation is this, Chitle Sahab, that some some expenditure are claimed in the hand of the company, uh, which they are claiming to be some kind of business promotion expenses. Now, those business promotion expenses are treated to give in, in, yielding to income in the hand of the person who are dealer. I am yet to understand that 
suppose that they how it is uh, how, there is only one section in the income tax law business at 28 clause 4 business perquisite which which only says ki when it is given in kind then it can be taxed but it is in the business uh, this perquisite arising in the course of business i am afraid this expenditure which is done by the company in its own hands in its uh, own independent capacity to promote its business trip expenses can it be called as perquisite to the uh, given to the concerned uh, what you say dealer taxable under 28 clause 4 to my mind no so as far as chargeability is concerned it is weak secondly the basis of the allegation is also hollow to my understanding as it looks from the limited facts given by the curist are you getting my point the allegation basis of the allegation and the chargeability of the income in the hand of the dealer is hollow chitle sahab can add now uh, what department is uh, uh, wanting to say that these expenses were not for the purpose of business promotion so that's why in the hands of dealer uh, they got no business end uh, survived by this particular trip so it was a pleasure trip so you were awarded pleasure trip because you are a dealer therefore but because sir, of see, in this line business, no no, no sorry benefit. sorry now this is a point gap here supposingly i don't we all not know ki what is the exact reason on the basis of which disallowance has taken place in the hand of the company oh. concern a Exactly. Whether it is whether it is whether he says it's a personal kind of an expenditure or non-business expenditure or some kind of irrelevant expenditure. But my case is very different. Chitle sir, twenty-eight Roman four says you, if you read section twenty-eight four, what it says, it says which business perquisite will be taxable, sir. It is a very limited section, and the onus is on the very revenue to say the value of any benefit or perquisite, whether convertible into money or not, arising from business or exercise of a profession. Then cause and effect relationship have to be established. That dealer ko wo benefit mil gaya hai. Supposingly the company is incurring that expenditure in its own capacity. It is no, it is not the benefit directly given to the concerned dealer, sir. That is what I am saying. No, no, I understand. But see, he is issuing notice. He is not saying that this is your income. He wants to inquire. Then if he no, 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 no. There is a point, sir. In one forty eight capital A clause A, it's not inquiry. It's clause B. It shows us notice that information is there in their possession, which suggests escapement of income. Now go to the word suggestion. Go to the word income escaping assessment. Now there has to be some charge. There has to be some charging provision. There has to be some some provision where I can be taxed on this transaction. In as far as dealer is concerned, in my humble opinion, that is weak. See, it is if it is prior to show cause inquiry, one forty eight capital A clause, then it is fine. But if it is one forty eight A show cause, then to my mind it is wrong. Exactly. So you mean that when you are issuing this show cause, <laughs> at that point of time you should be cock sure that yes, this is an income. Sir, otherwise, so, otherwise, so, then what will happen? Otherwise, what will happen, Chitle Sir? That show cause will be after inquiry. Right. So show cause you can inquire, but you cannot issue notice unless you are sure that yes, this yes. is income which I. Isiliye, isiliye, wo jo one forty eight capital A ka framing hai clause A mein inquiry hai, sir. I repeat, clause B mein show cause hai, clause C mein mera reply hai, clause D mein order hai. How their department is doing inquiry after show cause? This is my question. No, to that my response is okay. They have made inquiry. After having made inquiry, the assessing officer forms opinion that yes, this is an inquiry. But in 99 percent is... of cases, sorry, I'm interfering. In 99 percent of cases, my gut feeling says and experience says that they have not. They have given go by to this clause A inquiry. They have straightway jumped to show cause, and in the guise of show cause, sir, they are doing the inquiry. That is the reverse model they are adopting. Yes, so that is in not keeping with uh, provisions of law. Yes, yes. Now, if we assume that okay, they make an inquiry. After making inquiry, assessing officer is of the opinion that yes, income has escaped assessment. Then he issues notice under section one forty eight A, and then uh, the return is published. At least, and, at least, at least no, no, at that stage. Sorry, sir. Sorry, oh, sir. So, yes, please, sir. Sorry. And then he makes the assessment. So, where is question of assessment? He has already formed an opinion that yes, this is an income which has escaped assessment. So what? Why he doesn't pass order? Why uh, again uh, he is making assessment? So in assessment there is not going sir, to be sir, any there, deviation. There is, the there, is a, there is a there is a there is a serious question which you are raising again a very learned question, sir. You mean to say, Mr. Goel, that if 148 Capital A preempts everything, then what is the purpose of issuing 148 Final Notice calling for return of income and then framing the assessment? To my understanding, this is again going to be tested in courts of law very seriously. But to my humble understanding, जो मैं मेरा humble opinion है, sir. करेक्ट मी 148 ए का का डी ऑर्डर है वो नोटिस तो नहीं है और उसमें वर्ड लिखा है कि दे हैज टू पास एन ऑर्डर दैट इट इज ए फिट केस और नॉट 
after considering the material and reply filed by the sesi so it presupposes due application of mind it presupposes the existence of material in his possession information in his possession suggesting escapement of income it it cannot be like this ki that it is made to now in that in the gar ki abhi dobara assessment hona hai to usme ye sara cheez review ho jayega to isse 148 a will become farce an empty ritual and it will become preposterous it will become a dead letter it will become otios and negatory to my humble opinion so some sense has to be given to 148 a process salutary process and sancro sec process that when it, when they gave gov come to d clause at least some fortified conclusion is there that it is a fit case now what what is fit case i use how you decide a, a case is a fit case or not the word used in the law is fit case in clause d of 148 capital a to my mind sir you are right ki mr goel what will happen in the 148 it is a million dollar question sir but i am telling you with my all humility sir d order has to be proper order and it has to be with application of mind considering the entire construct of the, of the case it cannot be in a as as high court has said in divya capital in a template and general order sir ki as if all cases under 148a have to go to 148 that can also not be the spirit of the law my respectful submission so do we say I uh, in 148 it should be again a reason notice that this is my belief this is the reason and that's why I have formed the opinion that, that is the legislative in, that is that was the legislative intent when they when they made this change you you, you know sir otherwise otherwise he can drive shaft will go to hay wire now only he can drive shaft hope is in 148a otherwise there is no separate he can drive shaft in new regime be beyond 148 capital a so here for want of material he cannot come to that conclusion because this that this allowance may be for any reason it may be for cash expenses as as also. as i was saying you sir ki that in the earlier regime raymond bullen and rajesh javeri came because the statute was framed in the manner ki that prima facie cause and justification is required that raymond bullen case and rajesh javeri case now in the new law when 148a is done i am afraid you correct me chitle sahab there has to be con- even information suggesting escapement of criteria is upper in my opinion to reason reason to believe criteria and ao has to demonstrate at 148a stage ki that there is something more than what do you say prima facie view are you getting my point otherwise you you will go down reason to believe which is not the legislative intent to my humble opinion thank you Uh, very learned sir all the all your points have been great learned i am also learning <laughs> well great everybody is <laughs> well uh, we are getting the this top uh, section 148 from the two great uh, knowledgeable uh, speakers itre sir and goy sir can, next question can department issue notice for uh, str that is suspected transaction reports does it form part of information See, I have already told the criteria of information suggesting escapement of income. The word suggestion is very important. Black Law Dictionary. Uh, Chitle Sir, other day I was reading this Black Law Dictionary. How it defines the word suggestion? Are you noting with me? The word suggestion is also not a loose word. It's a very serious word. There should be serious indication towards escapement of income. So I don't know whether department just by randomly. uploading the information on the inside portal can it be elevated to information suggesting escapement of income level or not i'm i'm in my own humble doubts so just because a information comes into the portal it does not become like this that it is it is ipso facto giving escapement of income as divya capital mr justice manmohan's order of divya capital para 8 and 7 clearly says samir bhai divya capital para 7 and para 8 clearly answers it uh we are lot of questions many are repeated uh, now last two questions i will take uh, please explain in detail uh, first proviso to section 149 into 1 into b as well as its applicability for ay 2015 16 along with proviso 3 sir my, i repeat i have said it number of times there are four important things which you have to read together first is section 149 1b first proviso the text of the law then you have to go to the memorandum explaining provision of finance bill 2021 then you have to go to rajasthan high court sudesh taneja para 37 then you have to go samir bhai cbdt instruction dated 10 december 2021 para 5 and para 5.1 all colleges together read in conjoint manner would lead to inevitable conclusion that first proviso has to be interpreted like this कि आप आज नया वाला आज आप आज कहाँ हैं वेर यू आर स्टैंडिंग समीर भाई वी आर नाउ स्टैंडिंग इन मई 2022 जून इज कमिंग तो अगर आज आप 148 कैपिटल ए क्लॉज डी का ऑर्डर पास कर रहे हैं 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट के डिसीजन के बाद लेटर से पंद्रह सोलह ईयर का जो क्वेरिस पूछ रहे हैं तो वो कब पास हो रहा है हनीश भाई मई में पास हो रहा है और चितले साहब वो वो तो छह साल इकतीस मार्च को ऑलरेडी खत्म हो चुके हैं बाईस को तो वो अब टाइम बार्ड हो चुका है दैट इज वट आई एम सिंग एओ हैज बिकम फंक्टर्स ऑफिशियो ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू एज फार एज ए वाई फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन इज कंसर्न दैट इज माई हम्बल ओपिनियन एंड फॉर दैट आई हैव ऑलरेडी साइटेड सीबीडीटी इंस्ट्रक्शन डेटी टेन दिसंबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन विच सपोर्ट्स माई रीजनिंग एंड पैराग्राफ even if we fail on that front let me tell you sir it's not that the end of the war it's a beginning of the road uske baad bhi to sitle sahab unko teeno condition pura hi karna hai jo maine bar bar bola revealing uh, books document evidence revealing escapement of income represented in form of asset that is undisclosed asset wo kahan hai wo to kisi bhi case mein nahi hai और इन दोनों में से अगर मान लीजिए टाइम पार्ट वाला नहीं भी बना तो अगर आपका एक्सटेंडेड पीरियड वाले में आप आते हैं और डिपार्टमेंट को आप ऑब्जेक्शन दे देते हैं और डिपार्टमेंट नहीं मानता है तो आप रिट में चले जाइए हाईकोर्ट दैट इज द ओनली ऑप्शन टू यू लास्ट क्वेश्चन टाइम लिमिट टू रिप्लाई विद इन बिफोर इन केस ऑफ रिविलिंग ऑफ एसेट यू मीन टू से दैट एस्केपमेंट ऑफ बाई वे ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर विल नेवर कम बिकॉज मनी इज ऑलरेडी एक्सपेंडेड नहीं नहीं सर नो 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 यस देर आर थ्री डिफरेंट कंपार्टमेंट नाउ वन थिंग इज वेरी क्लियर एज फार एज सुप्रीम कोर्ट वाला पोर्शन इज कंसर्न चिटले साहब यू विल एग्री एंड इवन सीबी इंस्ट्रक्शन एज एग्रीड की फाइनेंस एक्ट दो बाईस ने दो कंडीशन डाला है अलग से एक्सपेंडिचर वाला और बुक एंट्री वाला वो अभी नहीं लगेगा और इवन जो वन फोर्टी एट डिपार्टमेंट ने अभी किया है फाइनेंस एक्ट बाईस के पास होने से पहले उसमें तो सिर्फ असेट वाला क्राइटेरिया लगेगा ना भाई साहब तो उसका मतलब ये हुआ कि असेट वो होना चाहिए अच्छा यू नो पहले एक सौ तिरपन कैपिटल है जब सेक्शन में यही सेम लैंग्वेज थी छह साल से पीछे जाने के लिए आप यू कैन नोट डाउन 153 फिफ्टी थ्री ए फोर्थ प्रोवाइजो सेक्शन 153 फिफ्टी थ्री ए फोर्थ प्रोवाइजो में सेम लैंग्वेज है जो 149 फोर्टी नाइन बी में है तो वहां पर सीबीडीटी का एक सर्कुलर मैं आप सबको बता रहा हूं प्लीज नोट डाउन दिस सर्कुलर एक्सप्लेनिंग वन फिफ्टी ए फोर्थ प्रोवाइजो सर्कुलर नंबर टू ऑब्लिक टू पैरा एटी सर्कुलर नंबर टू ऑब्लिक टू पैरा एटी हनीश भाई प्लीज नोट इट डाउन दिस सर्कुलर सेज When they mean asset, asset means investment in undisclosed asset. I'm afraid, uh, Chitle Sir, if we read 149.1b in the shadow of circular number two of 2018, that is para 80, then majority of their notice is extended period will fall down, will crumble, because there is no undisclosed asset. Now, sir, you understand? Undisclosed asset means it's very clear that which is unaccounted, which is unrecorded, which is out of books of accounts. supposingly i have all my bank account transactions recorded in my books of accounts how and bank account is part of my books of accounts it, it will never come to my mind under extended period i am very clear about it and department is using extended period to to tackle recorded transactions also that is wrong thank you uh, last question time uh, limit to reply within 14 days is to be calculated from the date of receipt of notice or 45 days the from date of the supreme court judgment sir we have to read it in a manner in which we generally read the law ki jis din aur amar ko notice mila hai sir usi se hoga samir bhai limitation ka ek funda hai jab aapko communication hua bhai sahab tabhi se meter down hoga uske pehle nahi ho sakta great uh, now i request uh, sri pankaj soni former chairman of aurangabad branch uh, to uh, kindly give the uh, formal vote of thanks over to pankaj You are on mute, Pankaj. Kindly unmute yourself. Uh, hello. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Advocate Kapil Goel sir for uh, his uh, uh, pouring of knowledge on uh, this important aspect of Section One Forty Eight and uh, the related issues uh, in which lots of uh, litigations would be there in uh, uh, coming days. i am thankful to uh, direct tax committee uh, chairman uh, ca cv chitle sir and uh, vice chairman ca dr raj chawla sir and whole direct tax committee uh, for uh, uh, conducting a webinar for the uh, participants uh, on this important aspect uh, more than 700 participants are uh, still viewing sir uh, even after now it is a dinner time so this uh, shows the importance of the Uh, topic and uh, uh, how eager they are always uh, to hear you, uh, Kapil sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, as a member of Aurangabad branch, uh, we are very much eager to hear you physically uh, and meet you here soon. 
मैं जरूर आऊंगा सर जल्दी मिसिंग औरंगाबाद चितले साहब को चितले साहब के साथ आऊंगा Yes, yes, sir. Absolutely. Both are welcome. We'll I'll talk to the uh, present committee and uh, plan uh, something on that. And uh, I will to, go to that uh, Shivji temple also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Certainly. Good, good I'll, I'll accompany. I'll definitely accompany you, brother. Uh, thank you, Sir uh, Hani, sir. And uh, last uh, but not the least, thanks to all the participants who have uh, who have joined to make this uh, webinar a good success. Thank you all. Over to you, sir. Oh, sir, sir. Uh, big, before big before uh, uh, before we conclude, I just uh, want to thing. make one There's announcement that thing. on third and fourth uh, June there is regional conference in Pune. Uh, the first time the WRC is uh, taking the regional conference out of Mumbai. So I request all of uh, participants please join the register for this uh, regional conference if you are already not registered. Thank you. ओनली वन थिंग आई वॉन्टेड टू से दैट कभी भी आप कपिल भाई को वोट ऑफ थैंक्स देते हो तो एडवोकेट से पहले चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट बोलिए तो सबसे बड़ा बेहतर होगा नहीं सही कह रहे हैं सर ये बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं मेरा आपसे मोह और रिश्ता ऐसे नहीं है ये तो मैंने कई बार कहा है कि अगर मुझे दोबारा मनुष्य जन्म मिले तो मैं यही बनना चाहता हूँ ये मेरी प्रार्थना है भगवान से परमात्मा से थैंक यू थैंक यू